We All right, I am getting word that we are ready for our next run here on SGDQ 2023. It is going to be the Kingdom Hearts Final Mix Any Percent Proud Race. Here are your racers, Violin and Mist Master One. All right. All right, hello everybody, I am Violin. I am Miss Master One, and followed by me, our fellow commentators. Hi, I'm Game Man of Color 313. I'm Bandit Yoshi. And this is Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. Uh, looks like we'll be playing the proud any percent category. Yeah. So <laughs> let's get started in three, three two, two, one, one go. go! Best of luck to both of you. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs> Hope you guys are ready to listen to Simple and Clean. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, what happened? Oh, that was good. Yeah, that song was <laughs> oh, great, man. Yeah, Classic good. every single time. So. We, we went so Sword. fast, we didn't even listen to it. <laughs> sword, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Don't right, so mind us. On Proud Any Percent, we're going to be selecting the sword and dropping the staff. Uh, the sword gives us a plus one strength stat, uh, and also dropping the staff gives us specific combat abilities, uh, the main ones being uh, Slap Shot and Hurricane Blast. Uh, Combo Plus is another great ability that we're going to be using, because uh, we're going to be usually utilizing our strength stat and our ground combos to do a lot of damage uh, throughout the run. Mm -hmm. And uh, by dropping the staff, we actually lose AP and not MP like you would think, because uh, there is no actual definitive magic stat in Kingdom Hearts 1, so we effectively don't give up anything, and ability pathing is not going to be tremendously affected. Uh, we'll just be able to accommodate for that accordingly. Right now we're going through the tutorial section of the game where you're basically getting used to how Sora handles in combat. Uh, we just have to take out these four shadows to get the next part of the game to progress. That was pretty clean. It was very clean. It's nice here in Proud we get the uh, swords. Uh, they die a little bit faster than in most categories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With staff they would die in four hits, and uh, uh, with sword they die in three hits, three normal hits, which is nice. So we're just going through a tutorial segment here. Uh, we're going to be getting a potion from this crate. And um, hopefully hitting this barrel and then jumping towards the door while the animation of the door is about to happen. Ah, didn't get that. <laughs> uh, it's a, a lot harder on uh, higher frame rates as opposed to like... 30 FPS on PS3. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because this is a uh, regular proud mode, it's very imperative that we actually pick the top choices here for our Final Fantasy characters. Basically, um, EXP pathing in Kingdom Hearts 1, it's dictated on the top options give you uh, Donny XP route, middle options give you midday, and bottom options give you night. And essentially, by picking the top options here, we will allow ourselves to gain enough levels in time to pretty much meet the appropriate strength we're going to be needing for the entire run. Yeah, we barely um, hit the strength necessary to uh, deal cap damage on the final bosses in the game by uh, level 43 with the current routing that Proud has. Oh, wow, that was a nice one. That clipped oh, so many with that finisher. This is the uh, infamous reset zone for... <laughs> yes. <laughs> especially on PC. Those are both pretty clean. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, don't equip the XP zero. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so coming up, we're going to be doing the first of many death abuses within the run. Uh, we're going to be encountering Dark Side 1, and uh, after the first punch that he uh, slams into the ground, we're going to hope that uh, we get a number of jump attacks from Shadows. They deal more damage than the uh, sliding punches or uh, quick jabs that the Shadows can also do. Mm -hmm. cool. This is completely RNG, so uh, <laughs> pray for us. All right, let's see what we get. Let those Shadows cook. Yes, yes chef. chef. <laughs> they cooked? All right, not bad. Mine are not cooked. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> oh, they're so lazy. I, I Send them back to culinary oh, no. school. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> there we go. Uh, at, no. at that point, it would have been faster to kill Dark Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, KH1 is just filled with minor RNG pretty much all over the place, which, you know, and sometimes it's uh, for a benefit. Other times, well, you just saw what happened. Uh, <laughs> there could be quite the uh, disparity between the fights that you'll see across this run between the two of us just with uh, how KH1 operates. Now that we've gone out of Dive to the Heart, we're going to be uh, doing day one of uh, the Destiny Island section of the story. We're going to be picking up Two logs, one cloth, one rope, because uh, we're trying to build a raft to uh, leave the islands and sail off to new worlds. Um, so right now, Mist has already picked up uh, the log, the cloth, and the rope. He's picking up the other log on this island that we're about to swim towards. And uh, yeah, 
Mm -hmm. This is basically just your typical tutorial, just to acclimate yourself to uh, how Sora controls, how he jumps, attacks. You could, uh, if you if we weren't doing a speedrun, uh, we could actually fight the uh, Destiny Islands uh, Final Fantasy characters that are here alongside Riku. But uh, we we don't got time for that. Yeah, so this is just a bunch of collect-a-thon stuff and uh, then some cutscenes afterwards. Uh, we do have some incentives coming up at the end of the run, uh, if we can talk about those. Oh, yes. Um, we actually have a level 1, 1 MP Sephiroth, which I know everyone, everyone, let's get hyped for that. Come on, you know, you want to see it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't hit the level 1 incentive for the run, but you still have a chance if you donate for that, so... Do yourself a favor. <laughs> Maybe not us, but uh, do yourself a favor. <laughs> uh, we'll definitely showcase that afterwards. Come on, we got to hit it. Bandy Yoshi, do you want to explain day two of Destiny Islands now that we've hit it? Yeah, so day two, we're going to be collecting these fish, uh, I suppose, for uh, nourishment on our boat trip. <laughs> um, we'll be going to this uh, friendly dark cavern over here to grab a mushroom. Then we'll be grabbing a seagull egg, a couple other mushrooms, and uh, some fresh spring water after the Riku race coming up. And we can't forget the infamous coconuts. And the uh, coconuts. Yes. I, my brain didn't even want to think about them. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, you really don't have to. You, you played just a couple of runs and you realize, oh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is just how it is, man. But yeah, I'll, I'll be clear essentials for a uh, boat trip mm -hmm. to find other worlds. Should be enough. So uh, coming up, uh, Mist is going to be jumping off of the roof of that seaside shack to grab this tree and then hop over, grab the seagull egg. That's the only one we're going to ah. need. Uh, no <laughs> task nut. It's okay. Do the thing, right? Yep. Yep. Let's see. Uh, where are you at? Uh, L1. There it is. Okay. Beautiful. There's the English um, alphabet. Hmm. There we go. Hmm. Yes. And uh, yeah, let's do that. There we go. Nice. Perfect. And fellow violin. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what good. I'm talking about. So right now we're in the section where uh, we're going to be racing against Riku for the right to name our boat whatever we want. Uh, so hopefully we get to stay with SGDQ and 2023 for Mr. <laughs> Violin, respectively. It'd be a little bit awkward if we just had high wind, you know, in the middle there. <laughs> high wind, high wind. I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to be jumping across these platforms, and uh, Riku didn't say that zip lines were illegal in this race, so we're going to be taking one. Uh, and once we get off on the lower platform, we're going to be hopping from tree to tree. We have to touch that star, and then once we do, we'll basically make a beeline back towards the starting position. Uh, if, when we do, we'll basically get um, a pretty stone for our troubles, and uh, we'll be selling that later for uh, upgrades to our gummy ship, which is how we will mostly traverse throughout the worlds. Mm -hmm. More on that in a little bit later. Yeah, so with that star co collected, there's going to be 119 more. I'm just no, that run got moved. <laughs> but yeah, uh, with the zip line, a lot of people uh, actually don't know how to, um, like they have an issue grabbing the zip line and then immediately Sora flipping over. All you have to do is just jump to the zip line and don't touch your analog stick at all and you'll just zip right down. Mm -hmm. Put your controller down and you'll take it. Um, yeah, that counts as a ledge grab and uh, you holding forward on the left analog stick, uh, Sora just flips over any ledge he's, he's grabbing. And here comes the uh, infamous coconuts, which are completely random at the rate they drop, so hopefully they don't take uh, too long here. We're specifically targeting Good. the tree that has the best drop rate for coconuts, but unfortunately it's still RNG uh, as to whether or not they drop. Average RNG. Yeah. So then we talk to Kyrie, and she gives us an empty bottle That's so good. that we can uh, fill up some fresh water, because uh, we're not exactly going to be uh, accessing any of that when we're on the open sea. Salt water is uh, not good. Don't dehydrate out on the sea full. <laughs> So yeah, we're just coming to the end of day two here, and uh, we will be having a series of cutscenes that we have to skip following our uh, next uh, real boss fight. A big thing that we did with Dark Side 1 was we death abused. Uh, Dark Side 2 is coming up next, and we don't get the same luxury. We will have to fight that fight out. But we do have a considerable amount of uh, cutscenes beforehand, so uh, this would be a very good time for some donations. All right, we've got a lot. We have a $50 donation from Sonic Shadow Silver 2. Let's go. Yo, let's go. Right on. Says, you got this, Mist and Violin. We are all cheering for you. Thanks, bud. Thank we you. We love you, Sonic. We have, we have $75 from Pudgy713. <laughs> Dude! Let's go, Pudgy. 
They say, ah, I'm up. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm so proud to see such an all-star cast for Kingdom Hearts on the SGDQ stage that I have to ask, is any of this for real or not? Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Good, good luck, y'all. Be sure to ask Oogie Boogie what he wants for dinner today. Oh, no. Uh, I got you. Probably have time for one more quick donation. Sure. We have $250 from Jada Ghoul, who says, missed. I always love your streams, and I'm so excited to see you on the GDQ stage. Good luck to both of you, and here's hoping I can see those wild level one strats. Thank you so much. All right, so now we've uh, exchanged our wooden sword, which deals no damage against these new enemies called Heartless, and uh, we've now attained our Keyblade, which is going to be our primary weapon throughout most of the run. Uh, we're going to be coming up on Dark Side 2 once we round this dark corner, and uh, Mist and Violin are both going to attempt to deflect as many projectiles back into the Dark Side hand uh, with specifically timed finishers. We're going to hope that we get a good fight, and uh, we'll know that we get it if uh, basically we defeat Darkseid before he raises his hand super out of reach. We also get some tech points, which uh, basically kind of function as virtual experience points. So hopefully we get the quick kill coming up. Uh, so oh, this might be tight. It's close. Uh, Let's go. Excellent. Okay, quick. <laughs> a little bit of a slip up at the end there, but we got it. Oh, oh, and nice. Violin, hey, the okay. double. Let's Good go. Save. And Violin just also squeaked it oh, out. So close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, in regular proud, unfortunately, we do have to deal with regular crits that can make a very big difference in our damage output, and Dark Side 2 is the first real fight where that matters. But thankfully, <laughs> it went okay. It's pretty crazy for early game. That's like one of the most technical fights for a while. Mm -hmm. It's a very, uh, very tight fight. Yeah, and I guess to explain a little bit, critical hits are uh, basically, uh, they can happen on specific moves. Uh, currently, they're going to only happen on our finishers, but as we get different combat abilities, they'll happen elsewhere. Uh, Slapshot will be a major one that we take advantage of later on. Absolutely. In the run. Um, and uh, they basically function as uh, temporary virtual boosts to strength. So for whatever hit they end up applying on, uh, they basically ma uh, increase damage output. We are uh, hitting these five shadows here because uh, to progress the world in order to talk to Leon, we just have to defeat five shadows. We take them out in this room because there are exactly five. Uh, if we were to fight them in the previous room where we uh, encountered them, th we would have more spawn in as we kept killing, and then it would basically be very difficult to uh, keep track of the amount that we had, and we'd have increased danger of taking more hits than we expect. We did take one, though, because we are planning to death abuse here to Leon once he comes in. So for both fires. Yep, uh, one of two attacks here. Hope the fire is the better one if he does that. Unfortunate. Aww. It's okay. Hopefully, Violet gets. Oh, but Violet. Hey, <laughs> nice one, dude. And just like that, <laughs> Violin takes the lead. <laughs> yeah. So if you you spent your childhood wandering through Traverse Town trying to figure out how to progress the story, turns out you can just kill five shadows, go to the accessory shop, and leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if, as you saw, um, because Mist didn't get the fireball, he had to uh, hit Leon five times to kind of provoke the AI to retaliate. Because we um, did not end up defeating Leon, we are going to have to grab this elixir in this room. So in order to do that, we need to talk to Yuffie because uh, apparently we need to be explained that our key can open a keyhole in a chest. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, nice. We'll be stockpiling a bunch of uh, elixirs for the later parts of the game. Pretty much not until like, the last like 30 to 45 minutes. So yeah. <laughs> Oops. Oh. All right, so we'll be heading to the third district in order to uh, get our first taste of uh, interactions with party members. We're going to be having Donald and Goofy join us. Uh, we're going to be taking out a wave of soldier heartless, and then we'll transition into the guard armor boss fight. Yes, yeah, so this first fight's a little bit RNG. Donald can uh, use his fires and kill them in one hit. Goofy can kind of push them around. Hopefully, uh, he'll get some kills. We'll see how this goes. All right. Yeah, this is especially dangerous on proud mode because uh, the oh, enemies have increased damage output, so things are a little bit scarier. We hope not to take any hits during this section. So guard armor right away will uh, stagger by uh, planking off his arm. Basically do as many three-hit combos as we can, and as soon as he does his attack, do another three-hit combo to knock him down. Yeah, once guard armor staggers twice, he'll uh, basically collapse and all of his limbs will be on the floor. We hope to uh, defeat as many of the limbs as possible when they're down. Uh, the reason is guard armor's torso, the central part of his body, will actually not take any damage beyond a certain threshold, so you have to destroy all the limbs in order to end the fight. 
and we wanted to make sure that we take out the arms first because the feet will be closer to the ground, won't move around as much, and no, no, that was pretty good. That was pretty solid. We got a lot of critical hits during the uh, limbs. All so right. this part of the fight, uh, there's iframes on guard armor, so you can't really do anything. You have to wait for him to like transform into his next state. Yeah, we'll need a couple combos there. All right, nice fight. It's a very good fight. And just as good for violin. Let's go. Let's go. Strong start. Yep. Uh, and from this fight, we get the Brave Warrior accessory, which gives us a plus one strength set, which we're going to put on right away. Mm -hmm. uh, we also get the Fire Spell from Donald and Blue Trinity, as well as a Dodge Roll from Goofy, which is going to be our main form of movement for a while. Yes. <laughs> for, for, for like 90% of the run. <laughs> We also get access. Oh, we're also going to get access to the items that uh, all of our party members have. So uh, we're going to be stockpiling the uh, ether that is on Goofy if he still has it uh, for later on. Run. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think he threw it. <laughs> Mish takes the ether from Goofy, but I I've stopped yeah, doing. I'm that. a baby. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. A lot of small differences in, in runs that uh, different runners do. Yeah, basically any time that we get a strength accessory on Proud Mode, we're going to be equipping it at, you know, the earliest opportunity. We're going to be going into the accessory shop, and uh, we're going to be save warping out of this world and uh, moving on to Wonderland, boys, remember? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Completely different routes between Level 1 and Proud, so we appreciate our commentators for uh, cluing us in at very key moments for the route. This is the part of like, the run where your brain's like, okay, I did all that stuff. <laughs> Time to rest, and then sometimes you forget mm -hmm. how. Autopiloting is very dangerous. <laughs> Most literally, right now. Yes. That, yeah. was, that was not a pun, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, right before we get into the first gummy ship, we're actually going to go to the gummy ship editor and basically strip down our gummy ship of all its parts and then replace it with a cockpit, a gun, and an engine. Uh, this puts our gummy ship in the lightest weight class, and so it'll move uh, much faster than the default gummy ship. Yeah, and by the time that we're uh, basically at this point in the Gummy mission, uh, we've already made back the time that we uh, took to edit the Gummy in the first place. Yeah, it's how slow the, the default one is. It's kind of ridiculous. We have a little bit of time uh, until we get to Wonderland for uh, some donations. Absolutely. We've got $300 from Dasha Q, who says, oh. oh, yeah, who says this GDQ has been nothing short of amazing. I'm always astounded by what the GDQ community is able to achieve year after year. This donation goes towards Kingdom Hearts Level 1. I always enjoy when Kingdom Hearts makes it into these events. I hope we get to see Level 1, and good luck to the runners. Well, we may not get Level 1, but we do have the Level 1 Sephiroth yeah. fight, which everybody can good. donate towards, which has been opened at $20,000. We're already at $2,300 for that. So keep those donations coming in. And also, we have a Final Mix Oathkeeper cutscene glitch at $10,000, which is currently at $250. So we still have two incentives that you can definitely donate towards Dasha Q, thank you very much for the $300. Thank mm -hmm. you. Do we have time for any more? Uh, uh, yes. One, one, one quick yeah. one. Sure. We got $50 from Sefi1277. Yo, what's Yo, up, dude? <laughs> they say, Miss Master arrived. Thanks for waiting for me to get home to start the race. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Good luck on the race, but whoever gets bonkless will win by default. True. Have, true. Actual have, truth. Have fun, Goofy W. Hey, let's see. <laughs> Love you, Sefi. Cannot skip this cutscene. Nope. <laughs> Shout out to the PC version. Yeah, for some reason, when they ported this game from console to PC, this quick uh, cutscene in Wonderland, for whatever reason, is unskippable. But uh, the good news is it's incredibly short, so we don't really notice it all that much. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be moving into uh, this new area where we encounter the Queen of Hearts. And uh, Alice has been jailed because uh, the Queen is thinking that Alice was the perpetrator uh, for attempting to steal the heart of the Queen of Hearts. We're going to be getting some evidence to exonerate her. So when we come into this room, we're going to be taking uh, a couple of qu quick movements uh, to despawn a wave of Heartless that show up here. And then uh, that gets us a blue menu, which allows us to interact with the evidence box to pick it up. Mm -hmm. A very important thing with uh, KH1 is you can't actually really interact with the environment while a red menu is going on, which basically means whenever enemies are around. So we have to take uh, very particular measures in order to get a blue menu or just flat out avoid a red menu uh, whenever possible. Yeah. And another thing that we should note is that uh, you can technically pick up up to four evidence boxes, but you really only need one to progress. Uh, so now that we've done it, we're moving on to the trial. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be trying to spot the... 
uh, box that falls the fastest because that contains the Soldier Heartless and that will let us keep Donald and Goofy going into this next fight. Uh, let's see if we can land it. Shall see. All right, here we go. And... Let's go. Yo. Excellent. Hey. The double. Let's go. <laughs> it's very hard to uh, detect sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're going into Crank Tower uh, Bandit. You want to explain this one? Sure, yeah, Crank Tower is a very strange fight. It looks very innocent, but it's not. <laughs> um, you'll see that they're both doing slower three-hit combos. We're trying to destroy all cranks uh, on the Crank Tower, um, but they don't get net damage applied to them during their animation, so we slow our combos down to make sure we're hitting them at all possible points. Um, and it's really hard to lock on a crank tower, but you guys made it look really easy, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really obnoxious. Like, the auto target goes away, and you have to, like, retarget another enemy and then attack the crank tower, like, with the enemy on the other side so you can actually hit the crank tower. And then once you hit it once, then the target comes back. But really obnoxious uh, yeah. boss fight. It's kind of the only target in the entire game that really acts like that. <laughs> it's yeah. very uh, peculiar. Yeah, so now we're in the Tea Party Garden. By examining that sign right there and sitting in this chair, we get a free elixir drop. Uh, the reason we're getting this specifically is because uh, losing to Leon earlier actually got rid of a potential elixir we could have gotten from him. Um, so we're picking this one up instead to make up. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we've hit the section where the floor is lava. We are going to only touch these two platforms, which have the candles that we need to light in order to get to the Trick Master fight. And uh, hopefully we uh, don't spawn any Heartless on our way there. Yeah, a little bit of hop from Mist side for safety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there I landed a little little swaggy strat there where you dodge roll to the next table. Yeah, you could either jump or dodge roll onto it. Technically, dodge rolling is faster, so uh, in more optimized runs, you will see that. And uh, both of our racers here doing a little bit of a jump uh, onto the uh, platform across from the second candle platform so that uh, we can basically open the latch on a blue menu because as soon as we touch down, Heartless will come out and that gives us a red menu, preventing us from getting to this part quickly. All right, so now the Trick Master. Hopefully we get chairless. Um, <laughs> that's, not, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's a very... Uh, hard fight, to say the least. Uh, basically what we're going to be doing is trying to get as many free hit air combos off on Trick Master as we can, trying to fill up our MP bar. Once we fill up our MP bar, we'll uh, dodge a little distance away and use all of our fires. Yeah. Um, it's important that we get onto this chair to reach Trick Master uh, before Trick Master sees us on it, otherwise uh, they'll destroy it. And we have a really hard time getting uh, hits in on Trick Master. Another thing that we hope doesn't happen is that uh, he walks over to the stove to ignite his batons because otherwise he's going to be nonstop blasting fire at us. And uh, it's proud mode, so we take a little bit more damage than the other categories, and uh, it's very dangerous in this fight if he manages to amp up his damage output. As you can see here, uh, it's very hard to hit without the chair. You have to hope you can get these two hit air combos in, but Trickmaster's hitbox is all over the place. When he swings his arms, sometimes he'll bonk off of those. Oh, okay. Got it's a very got a lot of critical hits there. <laughs> I've gotten one crit so far. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Lord. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of, uh, pretty much the entirety of uh, nice. Proud Mode is, that was pretty good. Not too bad. Uh, pretty much the entirety of Proud Mode is plagued by, uh, you know, saving a few seconds here and there on basically every noteworthy, like even some regular heartless enemies, but especially the bosses, um, you just get a random crit and that could really make or break the difference, especially in particular phases of uh, fights like Trickmaster, where when you deal a certain amount of damage, they kind of uh, give you an opportunity to, you know, really punish them and all that stuff. And it really, <laughs> it can be a blessing and a curse, depending on how lucky or unlucky you get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the default critical hit rate uh, is like a 20% chance of getting it. So it's really low at the start. Mm -hmm. Something like that. This would be another good time for donations. Absolutely. We have a lot. We've got $25 from Rico, who says... Yo, what's up, dude? All right. Who says, good luck, Violin and Mist. Super excited to watch my favorite game of all time raced by two of the best ever to do it. Violin, don't forget, one person, one person, one person, one person. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you, Rico. Do we have any more? Sure thing. We've got... Let me scroll back up here. $25 from Raza, who says, had to donate for one of my favorite game series. Good luck to Mist and Violin. Let's have a simple and clean race. 
We've got $15 from Fried Chicken, who says, <laughs> hey, says, hey, Mist, I just wanted to say huge congrats on your recent announcement. Always love to see members of the community showing up for a great cause, and GDQ never disappoints. Donating towards the Kingdom Hearts Level 1 incentive. Good luck on your run, and happy Pride, everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, happy Pride, everybody. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. <laughs> Ooh. Probably have time for uh, one more. All right, we've got $5 from Hutinum, who says, Thanks to Violin, Mist Master, and Bandit Yoshi for teaching me the Kingdom Hearts speedrun. I love you guys so much. Greetings from Germany. <laughs> love you, dude. Much love. Much love. Much love. All right, so now that we're going to be landing in Deep Jungle, uh, we're going to be taking another death abuse uh, with our first encounter with Sabor. Uh, we will be fighting her a little bit later on, but uh, in the first encounter, we just, you know, take the death. Uh, we're also going to be smacking her a few times so that we build up a little bit of MP for the first round of Power Wilds that we'll be encountering, um, but more on a little, more in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, we crash landed, guys. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Basically, Sora and Donald fighting right now <laughs> over who should like be in the lead or whatever, what they should be doing. All right. Nice, Violet actually Excellent. getting the uh, good RNG. The as, uh, I didn't get that, but the good news is if you don't get the immediate uh, third strike from Sabor, you can actually attack Sabor for a little bit of MP buildup, which is helpful for the next fight coming up soon. We're going to be doing a quick menu here so that uh, we can remove Tarzan's first, second, and fourth abilities while using the AP we just got from removing them to uh, stack up critical pluses on Tarzan to increase his critical hit chance. Uh, the reason that we removed the four, uh, first, second, and fourth abilities is so that we keep basically only his third ability, which is a uh, his version of a spell will obtain at the end of Deep Jungle, Cure. So it's the only M HP restorative uh, spell that any of us have access to. Donald doesn't even have access to it yet. And uh, with how dangerous the next couple of fights are and how unpredictable and chaotic they end up being sometimes, it's going to be a very valuable for uh, making sure that we stay alive. Something also of very important note is that we touch the save point in the tunnel when we drop down from the treehouse there, because we will be taking note of, uh, or making use rather, of uh, save warping, which is basically just go from one save point and then redock to another save point in the world, and that's going to cut down on backtracking immensely. Yeah, and right outside the tent, uh, Mist and Violin were both picking up the six slides necessary to progress this next part of the story. Uh, and so as soon as we skip this cutscene with Jane, we're going to be uh, starting our first of many save warps here in Dave Jungle. It's very different if you look back at like PS3 runs or PS2 mm -hmm. where we do not use save warps at all because the loading times are quite absurd. But ever since uh, this game released on PS4, PS5, Xbox and all that, uh, save warping is much faster. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's especially a boon on PC uh, with the loadless timer being legal. Mm-hmm. All right, so now that we show up in this vine section of the world, we're going to be climbing up and making our way to the treehouse to trigger another cutscene. We'll be coming back here eventually, but uh, for now, it's basically just a long series of movement from place to place. Yeah, a lot of back and forth in this world. We, we all remember getting uh, yes. lost in this world. <laughs> yeah, everyone does. Also, uh, you might have known, since we do this a second time, we actually entered the uh, mini game here. This is Jungle Slider, and just quickly we enter and exit immediately, and this will bring us right back to the tent in the fastest form possible. Yeah, Sabor is going to appear here, but we're going to ignore her. And now that we've triggered this cutscene, we should uh, engage in the first of a couple different Power Wild waves. Uh, we're going to be using our blizzards uh, whenever they're grouped up and uh, smacking them to refill MP whenever possible. Um, That's fine. All right. Okay, not bad. Okay. Yeah, we got to do this another uh, four times, and uh, each room, some rooms are usually a little bit more tame than others, but uh, it, it, they can pretty much just do whatever they want when, whenever they feel like it, and uh, a lot of adaptability with uh, just the minor enemy RNG you see here. When Mist and Violin save warp back into this section of the world, they're, um, they're going to swap out Goofy for Tarzan. Uh, Donald's got magic, so his DPS is pretty strong. And uh, Tarzan's got the heal, so he keep, he'll keep us alive. Mm. An important reason we didn't put Tarzan in like right away for the first Ooh, wild wow. fight is uh, when you save warp, your party members get swapped to default. Uh-oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Jeez. That's too bad. 
Yeah, uh, that Power Wild will, needs a raise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, unfortunate. The enemies can be insanely aggressive, as you saw right there, and I just barely did not get that potion off in time, but that's okay. Yeah, that's just one of uh, many examples in which crowd mode can be particularly dangerous compared to other mm -hmm. categories. Mm -hmm. All right, much better the, 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 the second time. Yes. Heading over to the treehouse here. This is one of the more uh, chaotic ones. Looks like his pattern right here is actually pretty good. Oh my what god. What is very happened? nice. Let's go, my dude. <laughs> you like to see it. Wow, you cleaned up that, that fight really so good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Thank you, Donald, for that blizzard. Okay. Oh, also, uh, important to note, Donald's magic is actually stronger than Sora's right now. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Um, basically, like Mist said earlier, there's no quite definitive magic stat the way that later entries in the series do. Your magic damage is based off of how much maximum MP you have, and since Donald has three compared to Sora's two, his magic is stronger. We'll end up increasing ours throughout the run as we get better accessories and level up, but uh, for now we're a little bit weak in that department. And then this is the last wave of Power Wilds for Violin. Not bad. Excellent. Nice Power Wilds, dude. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and then we got uh, one of the worst fights in the game. It's so <laughs> awful. It's, yeah. <laughs> we'll just let it speak for itself. Yeah. It's, uh, support two is kind of wild. You want to, uh, well, we try to put her in a certain corner so we can get this loop of uh, three hit combos and using blizzards and then keeping her on the ground. But uh, the movement that she chooses is, is very variable, so we'll see how that goes. And it's especially difficult to uh, get an opening because she's so low to the ground. And as you can see, it's yeah. very easy for uh, short hop air combos to end up whiffing. And basically, if Sabor is close to any of those like four or jungle edges, she'll jump in and then jump out of a random location. Oh, man. And we also have to worry about not dying at the same time. Yeah, so much. Uh, <laughs> it's a very small enemy, like vertically anyway, and it's just so difficult to combo effectively. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you won that, man. It's all good, man. Yeah. Nice. All right, so now that Violin has uh, defeated Sabor, we're going to be jumping over these boxes outside of the tent, and we're going to be making our way to the vine area that we saw before. Uh, we'll be spawning in a different location, and uh, in order to get to the location we saw earlier, we're going to be uh, turning around, touching the mini game that lets us do. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, enter this uh, vine swinging, and uh, we're going to quit out of it immediately and go into the next part of the world. Um, I also put on the white fang, which we just got from Sabor too. Uh, it increases our strength by another plus one, so it'll be very useful throughout the run. Yeah. People might think just one strength point doesn't make a big difference. It makes a big, a very big difference. Yeah, it really does. Uh, All right. So you see Violin just fought this uh, weird, strange black fruit on the tree. You just have to hit it 15 times. doesn't matter what category you're playing or what you're hitting it with or what your strength is. Yeah, uh, and it'll, 15 times and you're, you're good to go. It also doesn't matter if you hit it with a non-finisher or a finisher hit. Just any physical hit does it. Very strange fight. Yeah. All right. And now we're going into Clayton. A very scary fight. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So Clayton's going to start off on this phase one. We're going to try to pin him into a corner with a couple attacks. Donald threw out a fire there, so that's going to yeah, that's gonna help us out a little bit with damage. And now we're going to try to get animation skip. Uh, Bandit Yoshi, you want to explain this one? Yeah, so basically as soon as the fight starts, uh, you want to dodge roll onto this platform and get two three-hit combos in right away. Oh, that's too bad. Violin missed it. Basically, like, you have no margin of error for... Uh, mm -hmm missing that uh that opportunity so unfortunately you have to wait for uh clayton to do this animation of the chameleon like her stealth sneak rather becoming visible loses about 10 seconds so it's not absolutely insane but it's a nice optimization although you're getting a decent amount of these combos off so you might end up making that time back see if violent or uh, mismaster gets a uh, animation skip that uh, looks like he does. Nice. excellent you can see immediately stealth sneak appears and then we can put it in the corner right there we're out of here, though. Cool. Now for the true boss of Deep Jungle. Yes, <laughs> true. You thought this was hard. <laughs> Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. All right, so from defeating Clayton there, we actually got the Cure spell, which we are going to be using a lot. Yeah, nice considering fight. we died at two hits and pretty much anything on normal proud mode, uh, the ability to heal is uh, it's, it's valuable beyond words. <laughs> <laughs> Putting it lightly. Uh, We're also... Oh. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. 
Got it. Um, we're also going to be uh, picking a couple of chests up here in Waterfall Cavern. We're going to be selling these items in order to uh, get a couple of gummy upgrades later on when we touch down in Traverse Town again. Uh, we're basically going to be buying an upgrade to our engine and a gummy that allows us to, at the press of a button, accelerate temporarily. The movement here is so insanely technical. I can't tell you how many times mm -hmm. I've accidentally fallen off the top of this place. It's, yeah, it's still a nightmare no matter what level of play you're at. Ah, unfortunate. Oh, oh man, it's okay. Like, for example, Sora will grab onto it and immediately let go for no particular reason. <laughs> that jump is very difficult. <laughs> All right, so now that we've uh, defeated Deep Jungle, we've actually gotten a new keyblade. It's called the Jungle King. It's got longer reach and it's stronger than the Kingdom Key. Uh, so we're going to be putting this on bef um, at some point when we uh, fight in Agrabah, which is the next world after we uh, dock back in Traverse Town to uh, progress a little bit more of the story. We also got the Red Trinity, which is going to allow us to uh, enter specific areas and uh, you know get through certain puzzles later on in the game. Uh, but we have time for some donations. Absolutely. Just want to remind everybody as well, we're about to hit $3,000 on the Sephiroth fight. We need $20,000 to get that done at the end of the run, so make sure you get your donations in for that. Now, we've got a pretty, pretty good one here. Oh, Lady Luck sends in $1,000. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you, Lady Luck. And all they say is, go fast. Nice. <laughs> Straightforward to the point. Thank right. you so much. We'll right. do our best. <laughs> right on. We have $150 from Mr. Manny, who says Kingdom Hearts Yo. was the series that got me into speedrunning, and I couldn't ask for a better group of friends from the community. Good luck to Mist and Cello? I think that's the right <laughs> instrument. Yo, shout out to Thank the Shade you, Brigade. We've got $100 from Thar, who says Kingdom wow. Hearts 1? More like K Kingdom Hearts Fun. Fine. One time for the fans. C1. <laughs> Let's go. Thanks, Thor. Love you, Thor. Got time for any more? Oh, we, oh, got, we got a lot of time. More. We're okay. basically just going all the way back to uh, Traverse Town. It's pretty much just an auto scroller. Sure so thing. Just go, jump. Just go for it. Jump in when you're ready to take over. Absolutely. We got fifty dollars from Kiki, who says the Kingdom Hearts speedrunning community is one of the kindest and most welcoming out there. You guys are awesome. And to all the runners, commentators, staff, audience, and viewers at home, you are valid, you are loved, you are not the exception. Here, here. Thank you, Kiki. We've got $100 from Grinza Vogel, who says, not enough time to think of a funny comment here, need that level one run. And we did just cross $3,000 on that. Let's make sure we get $20,000 hit by the end of the run. We've got $10 from Dinksy, who says, shout out to the awesome, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Xeonort in the crowd. <laughs> Let's go Kingdom Hearts, right there in the front row. And we were peeping that right before, it's a cosplay, dude. And getting some recognition, we've got $50 from Andredge is the guy, loving the Z, the, Z the Xeonort cosplay in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Rooting for Kingdom Hearts to fill you with the power of darkness. Winky face, much love from Germany. I hope I'm saying that right. It's uh, Zeanor. Zeanor. Okay, yes. I'm, I'm Yeah, he's the uh, overarching villain of the franchise up until this point. I'm the horror game guy. You'll have to excuse me. <laughs> no, you're totally fine. All right. We've got 20... One more. We've got $25 from Ish. Bone XVKX, who says, long time watcher. First time donated. I'm watching speedruns from Violin a long time now. Happy to catch him now. Love from Germany. Good luck to both runners. Thank you so much, Bone. All right, so now Violin is going to touch down in Traverse Town once again. Uh, we're basically going to be doing a bunch of different uh, stuff to progress the story, including uh, talking to Sid and going to Merlin's house. Um, we're going to have to shoot a fire when we uh, make it to Merlin's house. Uh, but unfortunately, there are going to be enemies that spawn in. But before we even do that, we have to talk to uh, Leon, who tells us what to do with the gummy pieces that we picked up from uh, defeating the, the bosses in Wonderland and Deep Jungle. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to have to kill these yellow operas with a few blizzards. And did you just get a free oh ether? God, let's go. Oh, man. <laughs> I've never got an ether. <laughs> this is a GDQ moment. Ether and, and, and a quick despawn yeah. for the Red Trinity. <laughs> let's go. 
Yeah, the reason that we try to despawn uh, some of the Heartless, uh, we, we have to kill the Yellow Operas because they just get too close to us uh, to despawn. Mm -hmm. But we hope that the Heartless behind us that we pass on the way despawn quickly so that we can get the blue menu, hit the Red Trinity so that we have access to the waterway so that we can talk to Leon. Uh, remember to talk to him twice. Yes. <laughs> nice, good. All right, you also got the quick despawn. Very good. Nice. Us, we're... No ether though. <laughs> <laughs> Not that lucky. That's where the English and the Japanese versions of this game kind of uh, diverge. This part that we're doing now, we actually would have already done in English because there's this, uh, we call a waterway clip that's only in English. For some reason during the like Trinity discover cutscene in English, you can hold forward and cut mm -hmm. through that gate without having access to Red Trinity. Yeah, there's quite a few instances actually between English and Japanese where you're just general spawn and just how the game kind of loads in the next part of it over the course of like several. It, it just it's completely just all over the place. Uh, the game's kind of weird. <laughs> we are running on the Japanese copy though because this is the fastest way to play the game. Uh, the text boxes load in faster here than on English. Yeah, it has oh, the like air soldier Bob. <laughs> It has nothing to do with like text amount, like in a lot of games where it's in Japanese, there'll be less characters for the same amount of text. Mm -hmm. um, in this game, just for some reason, in the Japanese version, the text boxes you're able to mash through faster. Yeah, saves are roughly 46 seconds to English. We uh, also picked up a summon gem from talking to Leon. Uh, we're going to be making use of the summon that we get from it. Uh, when we get to Agrabah, the next world. Uh, we got the Earthshine, which uh, unlocks the ability to summon Simba. Uh, Simba's really good, basically just lets loose an AoE roar that can uh, hit a lot of enemies on screen. He's going to be invaluable uh, for a strat towards the end of the game. Uh, but for right now, uh, we're kind of just going to watch Merlin do his thing, and uh, Fairy Godmother should show up not too far behind him. Mm -hmm. Another uh, good time for donations. Yeah, for a quick one. All right, we got a hundred dollars from Seriously Surly, who says, Yo, "Nice." Who says, "Have a good race." My favorite Sora costume has to be Halloween Town. Curious what yours and chats are. Speaking of HT, my guess is four one three. More on that. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite costume? Is? My favorite costume? Oh man, I, Halloween Town is pretty drippy in this game. Not gonna lie, I like it. <laughs> Uh, I'd say Pirate Sora. In oh, yes, story. that's a good one, too. Mm. You, stole, you stole my answer, Vi. <laughs> <laughs> Cage 3 Pirate Sora is too strong. <laughs> right, so we're going to be save warping back into the accessory shop, and I believe this is where we uh, do the big sale for uh, money for the gummy upgrades. Uh, we're going to be selling, I think, everything except the elixirs. Yes, that is correct. Looking for 1250 money, that's the exact amount of money we need to buy the two specific parts we'll be buying in a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did pick up an extra chest in the tent in the deep jungle just to m be sure that I have enough money. <laughs> in a worst case scenario, you can also sell uh, gummy parts to sit, but we shouldn't have to uh, go to that. And then Sid is also going to give us uh, an old book, which is actually the book that allows us to visit the 100 acre wood. We won't be visiting it at all during the any percent run, but, Thank uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we kind of needed to progress to the next part of the game. And Violin was a little careful there because he's got that extra ether chilling. Yeah, that was very weird. Don't want to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going we're gonna to be warping back into Merlin's house. We're going to talk to him so that uh, he can give the repaired book uh, a new home on this little stand that he's going to show. And then uh, once we're done with this cutscene, we'll get Simba, and then the world is actually kind of locked out for a little bit. Um, and what I mean by that is we're not uh, able to save warp. We're not even able to touch the save point and go anywhere once this cutscene is over. So we're going to be moving back into the uh, third district to progress the next part of the story. It's also uh, very particular with what's coming up in just a moment, is we're going to get a cutscene special, especially with the uh, third district now that we've done this part of the world. And uh, during this particular sequence, when Riku shows up, that's where we skip the cutscene, uh, no enemies will actually spawn in third district, and it's the opportune time to open up the shortcut to first district that Violin is doing right now. Perfect yeah. example of prepping for, we're going to have a red menu and we don't want to get rid of it by killing all the Harlots, so it mm -hmm. takes way too long. Especially in proud mode, you really don't want to deal with, <laughs> yeah. deal with enemies if you don't have to. 
Now that we've gotten to this point in the game, uh, Sid has kind of moved shop. He's no longer your average peddler in the accessory shop. He's going to only sell gummy pieces from now on. So when we go back into the first district to talk to him, we're going to encounter him in a new spot, and then uh, we'll buy the Fyra gummy and Haste gummy from him there. Yeah, Sid is like the true speedrunner. He literally teleport from this room to the first district before we even... How does he do it? <laughs> There's like some secret ele elevator in the second district, I swear. This is the third district. I know, but he's... I, because wow. we, we because we don't see him here, he must be taking the long way around, and it must be faster somehow. <laughs> that air soldier really did not like you there. I know. It won't be the, uh, the last air soldier that tries to uh, mess with our movement. Yeah, from Sid here, we're going to buy the Fyra G and the Hasa G, uh, if you guys want to explain what that is. Yeah, so uh, the Fyra G is an upgrade to our Fire G engine, so we should have a base movement speed increase. And then we also have the Haste Gummy, which uh, basically allows us to uh, accelerate at the press of a button. Uh, it slowly recharges over time, so like every seven seconds you have access to another boost. Uh, we're save warping to Wonderland once we get back into the main uh, world map because uh, the, there's a warp hole that allows us to get into the next uh, world. And in order to enter it, um, we basically just have to go on the menu between, or we have to go into the gummy mission between Traverse Town and Wonderland. But uh, warping to Wonderland actually puts you closer to the warp hole. Yeah, the map is a lie. Uh, <laughs> Tattoo Namora was not a great cartographer. <laughs> Unfortunately. Not at all. We're also leaving Traverse Town a little bit early because uh, normally people would associate this visit with actually sealing the keyhole to Traverse Town and you fight opposite armor, but we're not going to do that right now. Uh, we basically only have to come back there once we get the next real major uh, story progression item, which is the Navi G piece from Neverland, and that's quite a ways away from there. And since the matching part to the Navi G piece is in Traverse Town from defeating opposite armor, we may as well just wait as long as we can and deal with that fight in a much more efficient manner. And we have much more resources, much higher level, much faster fight. Uh, also, in these gummy missions, uh, the damage that you take is actually scaled depending on the difficulty that you're playing on. On Proud, you take the most amount of damage. And those enemies right there that just passed me, they can one-shot you. So we're doing very specific movement here uh, just to avoid that from happening. Uh, I can't tell you how many runs I've, lo I've lost when I first started learning this category because those two enemies would just mm -hmm. hit me from behind. Yeah, amen. Uh, Bandit Yoshi, do you want us to give, give us a little preview of what we're going to taste uh, when we get to Agrippa? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Agrippa, I mean, there's not much to say. It's a peaceful world, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? Uh, yeah, uh, so Agrippa <laughs> is scary. Um, it's, it's essentially a boss rush. Yeah, there are four total bosses that we'll encounter throughout this world. Especially the first two are heavily uh, RNG dependent. Oh my um, goodness. <laughs> so let's, let's all brace ourselves. Luckily the beginning is pretty easy. We're going to go talk to Jasmine, uh, find out we need to go save Aladdin from the, uh, the desert, uh, which we'll be seeing our first summon usage with, usage with Simba. Yeah, our strength isn't high enough, uh, nor is our magic to really take care of the enemies quickly. Um, especially when the bandits are so dangerous that uh, they can kill you in two hits. So uh, the safest way to take care of everything is uh, with Simba's Roar. We're going to be freeing the carpet here so that we can actually access the fight where we save Aladdin. And then uh, Violin is going to touch this save point here so that we can save Warp back. Uh, we're also going to pick up this Mega Elixir chest, which is going to be very useful later on. Surprise tool that we'll use later. <laughs> How does he have an, a Mega Elixir, dude? <laughs> Such a rare item. He's just a very good thief. <laughs> yeah, there used to be a trick in this game called uh, Bandit Skip, where we would um, like unlock a keyhole while skipping a Bandit spawn, and then we would go around to Aladdin's house. Uh, but because of the fast load times on P PC and the newer generation of consoles, like PS4 and up, mm -hmm. uh, it's way faster to just save warp to Aladdin's house. So here, uh, there's two groups of bandits. They spawn in five uh, at a time. You want to make sure all five are out of the ground before you use your uh, Simba charge. That was a clean fight. Nice. Yeah, because we only have two charges with Simba. If you miss any of them, then uh, you have to finish it on your own, which can take a while. Yeah, I can't tell you the amount of times I've had fights where I thought I killed both waves, but then there was one survivor who hadn't quite poked out of the ground yet. All right, so to do that save warp that we spoke about earlier, we're going to pop into this little hut off the side. 
And now we re-enter the world map, drop back into Aladdin's house. It's a weird thing that can happen there if you like touch the save point, that second one, like a little too early, and then uh, it doesn't actually show up on the world map. So you'll mess up your menu, but luckily that's not going to happen here probably. Yeah, so we're going to be uh, thieving from the thief here. We're going to be taking all of uh, Aladdin's potions and ethers, and we're going to be adjusting his abilities here so that uh, he does uh, very specific attacks uh, instead of ones that could potentially interfere with fights later on. And, oh, he got the Every black, time. He got the black <laughs> fungus spawn. Uh, we also put scan on Sora, and now we'll be able to see the, uh, the health bars of enemies which will be important for certain fights. So the reason that Violin backed out of this room as soon as he saw the red menu is because uh, the black fungi spawn at sort of the bottom of this room uh, where the last bandit ended up being here. Um, and unfortunately, they just take too long to defeat, so we just reload the area in order to uh, encounter the Heartless that we can defeat easily to get the blue menu that... Uh, Goodness gracious. ...that lets us <laughs> get the keyhole and uh, open the next area, which has the first boss fight. Which, uh, oh lord, Pot Centipede. Where do we begin? <laughs> so unfortunately, Pot Centipede is, is only peaceful in uh, beginner mode just because your damage is so high. Yeah, and but, the amount of damage that you take is so low. Uh, but here... It's, uh, it's the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite the opposite. So start off the fight by um, doing as many three-hit combos on Pot Centipede as we can until he breaks apart. And basically, we're just going to wait. Uh, we don't want to destroy these pots. We need pots, uh, pots to form back into pot centipedes so he walks into the other rooms. Uh, we tank the hit intentionally when he's breaking out of that first area and then heal because uh, the pot centipede has a lingering hitbox on his approach out of that first room. Uh, we're hopefully going to see him re- that was okay. fast, oh my god. Yeah. Um, oop! Okay, good. Um, we want to see the pots centipede uh, reforms with a body of at least two spiders. Usually that means that his AI will begin another approach um, in between rooms. It, it Technically, when the pot spiders rejoin the main body, there's also a little bit of HP that gets rehealed. Nice fight. Nice, fight. nice. That was really good. Yeah, that's an above average fight for Proud. Mm -hmm. I never got a fight that good in practice. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see both of them got a pot centipede with two uh, pots, so they're actually doing double damage on their finishers because it's hitting both the head and the tail. I can't believe it. We got two good pot centipede fights. That's really what unbelievable. Is it's SGDQ luck. Are we in Agrava? <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys it was peaceful. Come on. All right, so now we're coming up on Tiger Head. This is another especially dangerous fight because uh, once the Tiger Head gets to... Uh, well, technically his name is the Caper's Wonders Guardian, but uh, we just call him Tiger Head for short. We're going to be deflecting projectiles back into his eyes the same way that we did with Dark Side 2 way back on Destiny Islands. Um, we are hoping that by the time that he shakes his head uh, that we're able to defeat him not long after because uh, him shaking his head means that he's about at half health. And beyond that point, he'll start summoning in other Heartless, which uh, can fling themselves up onto the nose of the Guardian and uh, interfere. You may also get some stray shots from the eyes, uh, just like Violin had. But it uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem as long as the enemies remain docile. Sometimes the, uh, the lock-on system <laughs> likes to attack you too. Yeah, the camera is its own boss in this fight. <laughs> he just jumped and stopped short on the nose. That was okay. good. Clean. Again, yeah, uh, Violin making that look very easy, but uh, falling off the head is very easy, getting hit, having to heal, it, it's it's very chaotic sometimes. Yeah, I'll be the first to tell you that, uh, at least in level one, I've died to that fight a million times. We all have. <laughs> Leave me alone, please. Oh, oh, no. 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 Uh, oh my uh, god. Uh, we okay. got it. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> close one. Really close one. Clutch. Oh, you got the no scope. <laughs> Do you mind if I give a quick incentive update? Yeah, yeah sure. Absolutely, right. go for it. Perfect so for time. the Sephiroth fight, we're currently at about thirty-eight hundred dollars. We need twenty thousand for that. Also, we have this Oathkeeper cutscene glitch at ten thousand. It's at seven twenty. So make sure we got a lot of donations coming in. Make sure they're going for that incentive. Keep them coming, folks. I know we can do it. Absolutely. I can't believe this aggro is going like way further yeah. than it really should. I'm gonna grab this elixir here again, stockpiling for late game. And then uh, we're going to be uh, touching the uh, save point when we get into this next treasure room. And then uh, the next fight coming up is going to be Jafar. And uh, Bandit, do you want to help explain how we handle this one? Sure. So uh, as soon as the fight starts, uh, we dodge roll up. And we're going to do two hits into a blizzard. 
The wizard's very important because we want Jafar to try to summon this magic resistant bubble. And as soon as he uh, forms his bubble, we hit him at a very particular time to keep him up on this platform. You have a very, very small window. Uh, Violin's gonna get Jafar down to a very certain HP. We don't want to over damage him, otherwise it's gonna be very hard to kill him on the next. And they didn't take any damage, so there was no need to heal them back up. Oh well, never mind. I spoke too soon. Ooh. Oh, no. oh. So uh, Violin was a little off center. We want to try to bring him back to the starting platform. Just gonna have to do a little bit of improv here. Ouch. So I'm wait for Jafar to come back down and hit him, so we can basically reset what we were trying to do. Oh, he, he brought the you bubble up this. Violin's fine. doing some crazy stuff, and I love it. <laughs> Improv. Ooh. Ooh, is he gonna... Oh, um, he just uh, barely missed it. Some yeah, mi yeah, Mist, Mist has a... Uh, off the, uh, the fight here. Unfortunate. So. Uh, That's yeah. okay. He was over damaged, so uh, mm -hmm. once we uh, finished the bubble part of the opening, uh, he teleported and ran away. Ideally, we'd finish this fight in two cycles, but... Uh, on proud mode, it's extremely tight. Agrabah saved its uh, chaos for uh, this one. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we take that. All though. right, good fight. Yeah, three cycle is still pretty decent. Nice. All right, okay. we take those. Excellent. You guys dealt with the chaos very well there. Yeah. <laughs> it's very difficult to adjust that fight on the fly because sometimes yeah. you end up securing mm -hmm. the kill at literally the last yep. second. It's like it's very dependent on your critical hit RNG and also how much uh, how much Aladdin crits on top of that. So there's a lot of just stuff out of your control that really just dictates how fast you can really go and sometimes you just get unlucky like that. We try to rally our party members with triangle so that they end up being more aggressive on uh, Jafar in particular, but um, you know, it's still like mis mismentioned. It's a lot of RNG. All right, so now we're on Genie Jafar. Uh, we're going to be shooting blizzards onto Genie Jafar and uh, doing physical combos on Iago. And we're going to be swapping off uh, between whichever, depending on what's appropriate. And uh, this is a little bit of te tech that... Uh, oh, you ran away fast. Oh, man. Unfortunate. This is a really rough pattern. Yeah. <laughs> um, I shouldn't have said anything. Whenever Iago parks in front of that uh, little, you know, flaming section of the platform, um, we hope that he kind of parks there uh, so that we can get a lot of free combo finishers because uh, there's a little bit of tech that we do where we toggle off of Iago so that the momentum from Sora's finishers doesn't carry him too far away from Iago because for some reason when Sora is air comboing on something at close range, uh, he can actually kind of spin away from his target. It's actually a really weird pattern. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Come on, Lan, help me out a little bit. Ooh. Help me out, my dude. Okay. There we go. Good. Okay. All right, and that's Agrabah's boss fight, mm. pretty much. That's the last one that we're going to do in this world. All things considered, Agrabah was not that mean <laughs> compared to the average one that we usually see in real life. Yeah, these guys made it look super easy, but it is not always that clean on Proud. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad that we didn't get walled on the first two fights. <laughs> mm. All right, Aladdin didn't help me at all. Uh, unfortunate. <laughs> All right, so now that we're uh, out of this, we have a little bit of a carpet escape segment. We're going to try to leave the Cave of Wonders. Uh, Mist, please don't die. I hope that this run, you know, remains... I'm trying, bad. man. Oh, it's, it's hard to dodge yes, these. Oh, my God. Please, How? focus. It's okay. I won't get hit again, I promise. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, all right. You, you still have one hit left. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh, That's I, intentional, I by the way. Oh, I got, I got one. Okay, cool. Oh, never mind. New discovery. Yeah, so apparently if you just die during this carpet ride, the, the game's like, you know what, you, you, you just did enough. You can, you can just leave. <laughs> You're fine. Shout out to Spike Vegeta. Yeah. Um, the reward that we get for defeating all the bosses here in Agrabah and completing the world uh, is an, a new Keyblade. It's uh, Three Wishes. Um, we'll be equipping that when we get into the next world, Monstro. And, uh, uh, yeah, it just comes with a bit of extra strength. We have uh, time for a donation. All right, we got five dollars from Marathon Man, who says, yeah, "What's up, dude?" <laughs> who says, "Best of luck to two absolute legends on racing this absolute onslaught of difficult bosses and tests of patience that we sometimes refer to as Kingdom Hearts Final Mix." <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my friends on commentary and the whole Kingdom Hearts speedrunning community for being as warm and welcoming as they have been to me. Here's to the level one Sephiroth showcase, and we are at thirty-eight hundred ninety-one dollars out of twenty. So make sure your donations are going towards those incentives. Thank you, Marathon Man. Let's go. 
Definitely got time for a uh, few more. All right. We got $25 from Park and Harbor, who says, love to see Kingdom Hearts 1, or as I like to call it, Disney Dark Souls. <laughs> Hope to see the Sephiroth incentive hit. Good luck, gamers. Thank you. We've got $5 from Palaka Miller, who says, Sephiroth hype. 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 Oh, here's one. We have from Mile. It says Mile Graves. Oh, Miss, no. oh wow. Mile Graves, Miss Continent with $500. Holy moly. Yo. What's up? <laughs> says, good early morning from the East Coast. Good luck and have fun, Violin and Mist and Game and Bandit. May Donald be kind during Anti-Sora. Shout out to you all for having such wonderful communities. Had to make my donation during this run because you are all the best. And to support Medicine Sans Frontier, putting this towards Sephiroth, too. And we're about to hit $4,000 on the Sephiroth nice. incentive. Keep them coming. Thank you so much, Milo. Yeah. Milo, of course, throwing in the, you know, the original French name of Doctors Without Borders because she's actually a French teacher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to be touching down in Monstro. There's kind of a long uh, series of text boxes and cutscenes that we'll have to skip through. But uh, once we touch down, the world itself is actually pretty short. We only have two bosses that we really need to fight. Of course, we are going to be dealing with the difficult movement trick that mm -hmm. we'll try to pull off oh, here. Yes. Uh, Bandit Yoshi, do you want to explain that one? Yeah, so before we get there, something called a Chamber 3 skip. Um, as soon as we start uh, being able to move around in the world uh, as we go through the different chambers of Monstro, uh, once we go into the first room, we're going to try this very tight swing that's going to land us on this uh, really small ledge that's going to let us jump to another ledge and skip a, a couple chambers in Monstro. Um, so we'll see if we can get it. If you don't get it, you lose about six to eight seconds. Uh, so it's, it's not like it's a super big deal, but it, it, it would be nice. <laughs> and it's SGDQ, so we got to bring the swag. Come on. Oh, well, now the pressure's on, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll, you both will get it. This is one of those tricks in, in speedrunning, as I'm, I'm sure a lot of speedrunners out there know, where like if the less you think about it, the better you'll do it. True. But now also, you got me thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sabotaging. Right. Here we go. You'll also notice that uh, they'll angle their camera towards the loading zone so that they can get the setup for it. Let's see. I think that should be good. Nice. Yeah, excellent. Let's go. Perfect. Oh, hello. Oop. <laughs> <laughs> Air Soldier wanted to say hi. He was like, hey, good job, man. Pat him back. He did it. Good. All right. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, as Bandit Yoshi was explaining, uh, Chamber 3 Skip allows us to uh, avoid having to take the long way around through Monstro's chambers. Um, once we get into Chamber 4, nice we're basically going to get it. Hey, two for two. Let's, Let's go. go. Easy. Easy. I like the vi violin has the yellow strap for that one. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I take a second to set up. He just floors it. Oh, uh, three wishes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Don't mind the blue squares. That's, it's not, <laughs> what blue squares? Nothing. <laughs> anyway. All right, so in Parasite Cage 1, we're hoping that our party, which now includes Riku, funny enough, our best friend from Destiny Islands, uh, we're hoping that we can maintain a stagger loop without the party interfering, uh, basically just doing as many short hop combos as possible. The finisher should stagger every time, and uh, hopefully we get some critical hits to speed up the fight as well. Basically hoping the party doesn't hit at a very op inopportune time to mess up the uh, stagger. Yo, this is looking clean. Very good. Oh my god. That was amazing. Party behaved. I hope uh, Violin gets the same treatment. <laughs> it's looking good so far. Yeah. You're... What is happening? This <laughs> mid-game is turning out really good. Mm -hmm. Let's go. He's oh got god. it. Got... He's nice. got it. Nice. <laughs> Very innocent looking fight, but trust me, if anything goes wrong, you're, you're, <laughs> you're freaking out a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that we come onto Geppetto's boat, we're going to be getting this ability from a chest. It's called High Jump. Uh, sure enough, it lets you jump higher. Uh, we're going to be equipping wow. that to get into the next area, and we're also going to be equipping a couple of other abilities. Um, I believe we put on Slapshot, Combo Plus, and uh, what counter Counter Attack. Counter -attack. Yes. You guys know uh, we don't really speak Japanese, so it's uh, a, little, a little difficult sometimes to remember that. <laughs> so uh, Slapshot is a combo modifier. Uh, it, it's a move that appears before your combo finisher. And uh, the reason that we'll equip it is because uh, Slapshot is one of those moves that I explained earlier that um, critical hits can appear on. Uh, and there's a Keyblade that we're going to get as a reward for defeating Monstro's uh, bosses that basically guarantees a critical hit on any attack that would produce it, including Slapshots and Finishers. And we're going to make a very good use of it coming up in the world after Monstro. So here's Pyrrhic's like Cage 2, kind of a rehash of the first boss that you fought. I see Violin there, just got the early stagger. Skips a, an attack that a Parasite Cage 2 does. 
You'll notice that uh, when Parasite Cage 2 is downed, Mist was not doing combo finishers on the uh, the little like uvula thing he's got going on. And that's because uh, if you do a finisher too early, uh, he can actually write himself back up a lot sooner than we expect. And we want to control the fight as best as we can because, uh, yeah, it's very easy to die on proud mode still. Although it's kind of being a little mean to me. It's okay. Rolling through that acid breath because uh, it just kind of AOE sprays. Violent kind of thing you can do for hit combos on it, but you have to be on a very particular angle. Is that a big Sid 119 strat? Uh, it's a strat that I found myself. Mm -hmm. Very solid monster. Now, there. very important uh, for this particular category is we're actually going to make a very brief uh, detour now that we've finished Monstro. Um, Geppetto and Pinocchio will relocate to Traverse Town, and uh, inside their house is a very important item we will most certainly want for the rest of mid game here. Yeah, Leon's got a pretty solid temporary housing program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, inside uh, Geppetto's house in Traverse Town, uh, he has a chest which contains the Wishing Star Keyblade. Even though it's short and technically at lower strength than uh, the Three Wishes Keyblade that we have on right now, the fact that it guarantees the critical hits on any uh, attacks that would produce them is going to be super um, helpful to us going into bosses in Halloween Town. Mm -hmm. It's also going to be very helpful for uh, Neverland when we get there as well. So true. Um, we actually have time for a quick donation on our way back. All right, we have $25 from a Def Punk who says, My boyfriend introduced me to GDQ a few years ago, and now it's tradition twice a year to watch together. I had to donate during my favorite game while we're watching together online. Hi, Alden. Let's get to that Sephiroth fight, chef. And an yes, update sure. on that, we just crossed $4,000. We're at 40, or 4,091 of 20,000. So keep those donations coming in for the Sephiroth fight. We've got time for another one. Sure. We have $5 from Glitched, who says... Yo, what's up, Glitched? Yo. <laughs> who says, shout out to the amazing talent on stage for showcasing one of the greatest games of all time for a wonderful cause. You're all some of the best ever to do it and a huge inspiration to me, putting this towards the Sephiroth incentive for even more hype. Best of luck to Mist and Violin. Much love and have fun. Thank you very much. Thank love you, you so much. Yeah, Glitched is one of the OG Kingdom Hearts speedrunners. He's a, he's a big figure in the community. Mm -hmm. Absolute homie. PS2 Warlord. <laughs> yeah. um, you, oh, you want to explain? Yeah, sure. Uh, a very quick menu they did there. Um, put on the new keyword that we just got, but also replacing Brave Warrior with uh, Ray of Light, right? Yep. Yes, yeah. that is correct. Um, and so after this menu, we're going to leave Town and head back to Monstro. Uh, one last time, we're going to grab an item called Water Gleam, which is going to let us summon Dumbo later. Oh. It's a very important uh, summon. The uh, reason we don't get it in the first Monstro visit uh, is because we have to go back to Monstro anyways. Um, so it's just more efficient to get on the way back. Dumbo is going to be very useful for movement tech uh, later on when we reach Hollow Bastion eventually. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Dumbo throughout the entire run saves like, I think it's like a minute, 50 something seconds, I think, in beginner, but um, something around that. Be very careful not to, to normal drive back into Monstro because mm -hmm. that's uh, unskippable cutscene and uh, you have to sit through the whole thing and then you have to leave Monstro again. It's, uh, it's not good. Definitely the worth the time to uh, make sure you, you actually drive to Halloween Town coming up here in a second. The reason that we uh, equip the Ray of Light in that menu where we grab Wishing Star is because uh, it gives us a, an increase to our MP, and uh, basically we're going to be using magic to uh, get rid of as many waves of Heartless as possible. Um, Blizzard is especially useful at uh, kind of taking out wide sprays of enemies, as we saw when we were in Deep Jungle. Um, so uh, having as much MP going into these early mob waves is uh, pretty strong. You want to give the uh, classic violin uh, spiel? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, shout-outs to Majora's 239 for showing us that uh, if you jump into that gate, it actually triggers the cutscene. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, Mist and Violin are both going to get to this chest up here. It contains a power-up, which is a permanent plus one to our strength, regardless of uh, what keyblades we have or what accessories we have on. Strength is a very important stat. We just pretty much have to keep boosting as soon as we can at any given opportunity. We actually will take another detour as we took a detour to get the Wishing Star Keyblade uh, for something else a little bit later in the run, too, but more on that later. So now that we're in Dr. Finkelstein's lab, uh, he's going to try to uh, make an artificial heart to control the heartless for like a big Halloween extravaganza. Um, shenanigans will ensue, uh, and those shenanigans basically are the reason that we're going to be taking on these heartless coming up. We're going to be throwing a couple of ethers onto Sora in this menu as well. Uh, power up. <laughs> yep. There it is. Nice. 
I was like, what's that last thing in the menu? I know I'm forgetting something. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been juggling Proud and Level 1, and the menus are very different in there. <laughs> yes, very much so. All right, so coming into this next fight, we're going to be encountering three waves of Heartless. The first one is going to be Shadows, the second one's going to be Search Ghosts, and the third one is going to be White Knights. After each wave, we want to jump to uh, quick spawn the next wave in, and then uh, should clean up this. And nice. Mist rolling forward so that he gets uh, MP bubbles so that he has at least one blue MP bar so that uh, when they throw an ether, uh, both Mist and Violin will refill to max MP. We're also going to backtrack now to Dr. Finkelstein because uh, Sally gave us uh, a little uh, something something. Forget me not. Forget, Forget me not. Yes. Forget me not. Story progression item. Yeah. yeah We're going to be doing a lot uh, of backtracking here. Yeah, like a lot of the worlds where you just go one place, get something, go back several times. <laughs> What's so funny, Oogie? <laughs> <laughs> he never tells us. So coming up next is uh, we're going back to the graveyard again, and we can actually get one of two spawns here. Um, generally speaking, you can pretty much deal with whatever the game throws your way, but an easier solution would be if we got white mushrooms, but it's uh, not the more common spawn. Let's see what we get. Uh, All right. It's a normal Heartless, the White Knights. All right, yeah, so it. we're going to be taking out that first one, then locking onto oh, the nice. White Knight <laughs> in the back, spraying them with five blizzards each, and then jumping onto these platforms, and then Miss is going to do very specific movement to get the blue menu to examine the coffin, and excellent. Okay, so now we're going to be doing the Gravestone minigame, and uh, let's see if we get that guess. Oh, it's a five. Well, I guess the earlier guess from the donation didn't pan out. <laughs> five through five. Two, six, two. <laughs> nice. All right, so now we get the uh, second component to the artificial heart. Um, I believe this one's the Jack in the Box? Correct. Yep. All right, so on our way out, Mist and Violin are going to shoot a fire at this platform so that we have a shortcut back into this Curly Hill area. Um, oh, now you get the white of mushrooms. Of course. <laughs> well, at least we got to show off Ghost Skip. That's okay. Yeah. We're going to be going back through that area one last time so that we can take on the bosses of this world. Uh, the first trio is actually going to be Lock, Shock, and Barrel. Uh, that fight is one of the fights of all time. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Just want to jump in real quick and remind everybody we also have the Oathkeeper cutscene glitch. That'll need to be met in about uh, about 35 minutes if we're going to get that. That's at $10,000. It's at $775. Just wanted to remind you of that one as well. Keep those donations coming in. All right, so when we come into this area, we have a cutscene to skip, and then we're going to be dodging all these Heartless that show up and only focusing on shooting a fire onto that platform, getting here. And let's see if we get a second Black Fungus. Nope. Uh, excellent. Yeah, there's two places in the run where Black Fungus spawns are really disadvantageous. This is the second one where it could appear, but uh, luckily Mist and Violin got uh, the quick one. And uh, y'all are throwing the ether when you uh, make it to the outside of the manor, right? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, we're basically going to be doing a strat that uh, level one and standard use, I believe, uh, which is to spray LS uh, lock and shock. beginner actually. <laughs> uh, we're going to be spraying lock shock and barrel with uh, as many blizzards as we can muster, and then cleaning them up with physical combos. Uh, basically, blizzard sprays everything on screen, and uh, we just want to control the fight as much as we can. Also, we're kind of taking a different uh, pathway up here. <laughs> it's not not necessarily the most traditional way, but it's fast. So. <laughs> Shoutouts to community climb. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody in the audience, hope for the best, because this is one of the fights that can really go south if uh, the enemies feel like it. Okay, starting off strong. Get on both sides here. Basically want to hit all them with the blizzards. If uh, any of them are not getting hit, they can start doing their attacks and interrupt you. Okay. Where you at? Gotcha. Okay, not bad. Nice. Ooh. Yeah, be careful here. Base anytime you're All right, getting excellent. your healing. Uh, quit Brave Warrior. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay. All right, so before we go into the torture room where we get the Oogie boss fight, uh, we're going to be swapping out the Ray of Light for the Brave Warrior uh, because we want to increase our strength back up to the maximum that we can. And uh, hopefully we see a three cycle, ideally, 
Um, the way that Oogie works is that um, he, his lower platforms have, uh, uh, basically his lower platforms have uh, panels that you can step onto and that elevates him so that you can get to the height where you can attack Oogie. Um, as you see at the start of the fight, he'll kind of like blast you onto the lower platforms. The reason that we do a high jump and shoot a blizzard is so that we have the enemies descend as quickly as possible so that we can defeat them and then instantly get the panels to light up. And we're going to be doing very specific combo sequences so that uh, we try to ensure the three cycle. Yes, yeah, so we do two full hit ground combos here and then two slap shots. You know, a very specific HP value. We don't want to over damage him. Otherwise, you can do this healing segment. And then hopefully we can knock back all these dice that he throws. Gotcha. Oh, my, oh god. my gosh. That was too close. Good. Okay. First one done. The, um, Mist and Violin are also doing uh, their best to make sure that when they uh, elevate the platform that Donald and Goofy are not on it. And that's because uh, Uki has a maximum count of 10 hits that you can land on him before he sends you back down. And we want all of those hits to be Sora's so that they can deal as most damage as possible because currently our party is not uh, doing so that. hot. Four. Uh, no, the worst one, unfortunately. Ouch. Yeah, smart with the, the healing there, because those those dice can actually kill you too, so... <laughs> Two shot, it's uh, it's not nice. It's not worth the risk. No, definitely not. Ooh, mm, looks like my one's about to do the same. Yeah, yeah, the same idea. Yeah, we're still not out of the woods, so to speak, in terms of Proud's ability to uh, end fights through deaths. Oh, he's guess, guess oh, my so man. Same dice roll, too. He, they're okay, bobbing and that's weaving. Good. That's good. All right, and now for the final phase, uh, both Mist and Violin are going to do nothing but slap shots. These deal the maximum amount of damage. I believe they're going for cap damage with slap shots uh, because you have the crit bonus from the Wishing Star in addition to just the raw damage from crits. And uh, now the fight's over. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to get both those dice reflex, at least uh, in a marathon setting, because you have to be really aggressive if you get hit out of it. And Honestly, it's kind of difficult just to get the one dice reflex, mm -hmm. even when you're on beginner mode. So. Yeah. I unfortunately got one air hit there because Sora auto jumped because of uh, uh, yeah. where Ouch. Ogi was positioned on the stairs. But shows you how important the slap shots are. When if you miss one, then you kind of have to make up yeah. for it with fighting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very tight for damage in that fight. All right, so Fair we'll enough. we'll try to explain Ogi Manor so that uh, both of the boys can focus up here. Um, there are seven orbs that we have to destroy on Ogi Manor. Uh, they're basically just like globs of darkness. Uh, as we destroy the orbs. Um, at the third orb that we destroy, actually, uh, the Heartless that spawn in are going to attack Sora. The house's attacks are going to be more aggressive. It'll start spewing these uh, dark orbs that can poison Sora. It's like a very temporary status effect, but uh, we really don't want to see it because, you know, we don't want to get in range of that two-hit um, death. Uh, Mist and Violin doing a stop on that upper uh, glob so that the gargoyles don't interrupt our air combos. Uh, yeah, taking a heal there was smart. All right. Doing another stop on them before we leave to keep them from interrupting us on this next orb. The globs can also shoot fire, and uh, it, those can also interrupt us and put us in danger. But uh, once we get up to the top here, it should be a simple cleanup. And go. nice. Yeah, those are both pretty peaceful. Nice. Dude, I love how close this is so far. <laughs> yeah, shout out to this race. This is a good very race. Very close. Proud's a very variable category, and a lot of things can go wrong, and the fact that they're basically at the same exact part is, is kind of nuts. Mm -hmm. um, we got the gravity spell as a reward for uh, beating Halloween Town. Uh, gravity is going to be very useful in the end of the run because uh, unlike other magic, which has a fixed damage calculation, uh, gravity actually deals damage proportional to the max HP of whatever target you're onto. Um, more on that towards the, you know, the later parts of the run. You guys ready? Oh yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, roll them out. <laughs> Just a sec. Oh, get in there. Let's go. Okay. All right, so uh, in this section, um, on console, there's a little bit of a uh, difference from PC, and that's because, oh my oh, god. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. It got me killed. Okay, maybe I'm not going to put those on. <laughs> so, uh, RNG Manette. Yes. <laughs> so uh, on console, the next world that we're going to be dropping into, Neverland, 
um, has a little bit of randomness to it. Uh, it there's a 70% chance that you will encounter Hook's ship. And, uh, you know, on console, if you end up missing it, it's like 45 seconds worth of time loss in addition to like the 15 to 20 for each additional miss after that. And you can miss multiple times. But uh, thanks to Denonator, who made a mod to uh, force Hook's ship to appear on PC, and the community who have uh, voted for it to be legal, uh, we're using it now to uh, ensure that we land in Neverland on time. Uh, until we get the Hook ship, we have some time for a couple donations. All right, we have $5 from Hemlock, who says, Level 1 Sephiroth fight, that's beans. We have $50 from Andredge is the guy who says, doing Sephiroth at level one at GDQ. Guess I got to donate again. Yo, Mist. Yo, Violin. Congratulations. Yo. Congratulations on getting to run Kingdom Hearts 1 on the big stage. Wishing you all the best of luck. Kingdom Hearts was a big part of my childhood, and I always love to see Kingdom Hearts representation at a GDQ event. Much love from Germany. We've got $25 from Kubaru, who says, donating again since those incentives weren't available when I donated, but I need to see that Sephiroth fight. Also forgot to give love to Enigma on the hosting mic. Such a great run with great runners and a great host. Much love. And an update on that Sephiroth fight. We're at 4711 of 20,000. So make sure you get your donations in. Keep them coming. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so now that we've touched down in Neverland, uh, we're going to be uh, moving throughout the ship to our next fight, Antisora, and uh, there's going to be some interesting movement that uh, Mist and Violin are going to take advantage here. On their way down to the lower decks, they're going to be casting a blizzard. That's not for experience, and it's not for uh, any particular RNG manip. It's just so that uh, Sora's magic cast animation takes precedence over ledge grab that he would normally do on the descent. It saves us a little bit of t movement time. Yeah, and this second blizzard, giving us a little bit of height and avoiding a ledge grab, too. And we're going to be doing this green trinity to uh, get into the Antisora arena. And uh, ideally, we see an opening where uh, we can instantly stagger him. Uh, hopefully, he just throws out an attack and he doesn't walk to the side. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Antisora has three different openings. We want him to stay in the corner that he spawns in. Um, but it's kind of up to RNG here. Nope. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, at least he didn't. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, that's fine. We can still make this work. Doing a couple of slap shots here, and then clanking on Sora's finisher. Yeah, doing very specific amounts of uh, combos here. <laughs> make sure we get anti-Sora in certain animations. All right, and now Mist and Violin will both try to get into a five-hit combo loop with Antisora. Basically, after every five hits in this Oofy. part, Antisora will uh, dissipate, and then uh, you'll have to pick him back up. It's a very tight loop if you can land it, but uh, I believe in both of these guys to do it. My party's being very mean to me. <laughs> yeah, basically in this fight, you, you want your party to die as fast as possible because they get in the way of the loop that oh you're trying to goodness, create. Dude. So you can see on Mist's side, both his party members are down, so now he can just keep Antisaur in this uh, consistent five-hit loop. There's a very small window for that first hit, so the timing there is extremely important. And it's especially difficult considering the short reach of the Wishing Star Keyblade. But and, that was pretty good. Yeah, was really good, good yeah. Uh, Did we get fast, fast bait? bait? Yeah, Excellent. let's go. Okay, cool. Yeah, so if you roll into the door as uh, the fight is fading uh, out, uh, you can actually get a, a very quick cutscene skip there. Um, it seems kind of random, it's not consistent, but we just kind of hope for it. Also doing a little bit of menuing here, we're removing uh, nice. Peter Pan's uh, timeout and storm's eye abilities, which are basically his way of doing uh, stop and arrow magic. Uh, we basically only want him to use his hummingbird abilities so that he keeps drilling into as many heartless as possible. Um, we're also uh, equipping the Raven's Claw for a little bit of extra strength as an immediate reward for defeating the anti fight. as well as making Goofy uh, believe you support actions immediately. Be very important for him to use Tornado and MP Gift later. Yeah. All right, so this next fight, we're swapping Donald out for Peter Pan, and uh, we're basically going to be uh, stopping these pirates in particular so that we can get our combos off. Peter Pan doing a good job of drilling. Nice oh, love, Sora. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you love to see it. <laughs> All right. 
All right, so there are three waves of Heartless on this uh, ship fight. Um, the first wave is pirates, the second Goodness. wave is air pirates, and then the final wave is going to be two air pirates and a battleship. We're going to try and stop the last wave once we defeat all of these air pirates. Um, in order to spawn it, we have to be on the ship, at least floating over it. All right, good. And... All right, we got one air pirate stuck in place. Uh, once the battleship is stopped, we're going to be doing two gravities and a couple of spare hits that should take it out. And then, all right, we got one air pirate left, and uh, time for the hardest fight in crowd mode. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Probably the scariest fight in, in the run, if not one of the, uh, mm -hmm. one of the top ones. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things going on in this fight. Peace out. <laughs> Just room uh, save really quick in case of a disaster. Yes, yeah, so that's if, if, you, if Mr. Violin dies, they'll... Uh, instead of having to redo the mob fights, they can just start the fight uh, from the beginning, the hook fight. Doing a very specific uh, opening there to, uh, you know, high jump in place and then float over the present explosion and then uh, smacking hook before he uh, jumps onto the lower deck. Uh, that's specifically just to uh, get a free combo on him. You want to control hook's movements as much as you can because it can, as you can see with uh, his kind of like blitz attack, he's just very dangerous when he's allowed to move however. You also have a heartless ship flying above you, shooting various projectiles at you that could potentially even heal Hook. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, both Mist and Violin are going to do their best to parry Hook's attacks whenever possible because we just do not want to take any damage. Two hits and we're dead. You can see Violin's been using uh, blizzards, which you can get Hook into a loop with blizzard. It's, it's hard to keep that loop because you're party members and uh, the ship. Yeah, after Hook takes enough uh, hits, he will basically put up a guard stance. If you physically attack that... Uh, oh, yeah, nice. Much... Uh, <laughs> I've had much worse yeah. fights, so I'm just glad to get that over with. The ship knocking violin <laughs> um, off the sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hook's not, not, a, oh, not a great boy. fight. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. I believe in you. So as we mentioned, uh, the guards... Oh, oh no, he, he shot the healing missile. Unfortunately. Yeah, that healing missile is so busted. It ends up healing Hook for like 77 HP. Which for reference, a, a full bar of oh health. My oh my goodness. A full bar of health is about 300. Yeah, so he literally heals like a fourth of Hook's health in one shot. Um, what I was mentioning earlier is that there's this guard stance that uh, Mist and Violin uh, attempt to break with uh, Blizzard magic. You don't want to use fire magic to break the stance um, because Hook will do this very dangerous pants on fire animation. Uh, we could break it with Thunder, but we don't have it. Uh, he's too mobile for gravity to really work. Oh my goodness, dude, I can't believe you're alive. Oh lord. Oh boy. I'm kind of holding my breath here. Yes, same. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, okay, that's, good, that's a kill. Um, can we get a huge round of applause for him surviving that fight? Yeah, Amazing. That ridiculous. Incredible that you survived that. Yeah. <laughs> Insane. The game threw everything it could at him, and he just said, no, I'm, I'm riding, dude. You he can't cannot, stop me. <laughs> you cannot be stopped. stopped. I'm glad we got to show off the yes. completely opposite like, <laughs> spectrums of the hook fight. <laughs> yeah, just in case uh, people don't know, <laughs> there you go, now you do. So now we get to explain uh, what Mist did earlier with Violin here. Um, so we're going to be smacking the clock tower hand three times so that we seal the keyhole, and then our reward for uh, you know saving Neverland is uh, basically threefold. We have the Tinkerbell summon, we won't end up using it. We have the Fairy Harp, which uh, is stronger than any keyblade we have, and also gives us a plus one MP, and uh, we also get the shared ability glide, which we're going to be using for movement as we get to the bell tower and the opposite armor fight. Uh, Mist also talking to the fairy godmother so that he can get the Dumbo spell from the Water Gleam Summon Gem. Uh, that's going to be useful once we're finally out of here and we make our way to Hollow Bastion. Mm -hmm. They'll be coming up relatively soon. Mm -hmm. So the bell tower has uh, basically a couple of heartless that uh, spawn in. Uh, they're Red Nocturnes, Blue uh, Rhapsodies, green, and Green Requiems, and Yellow Operas. Can't forget those. Um, so we're going to basically only spawn those guys in. Uh, this, which, this is why Mist is doing specific movement to glide over the floor. It's another instance of the floor is lava. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once they spawn in, I believe Mist is going to launch an Ars Arcana, which yes. is another... Oh, I didn't put Ars on. <laughs> oh. Oops, that's uh -oh. okay. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Uh, These Ars enemies are really weak, so it's not a big deal. Ars Arcanum is a, a really good okay. special attack. For the huh. cost of three MP, Sora basically does a huge flurry of attacks. Um, 
it's going to be very useful for our strat on opposite armor. I knew I forgot something in that menu. Okay, there we go. Much better. Nice. <laughs> okay. Luckily, that cleanup was was very nice. Anyway, mm -hmm. sometimes your R's is even slower than what just happened there. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have to uh, kind of ring the bell three times in order for uh, the keyhole to be prominent, and uh, the heartless looks at that and goes, "Hmm, juicy keyhole. Time to make my move." <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I had you on commentary. <laughs> <laughs> that made no sense, but yes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to stop the opposite armor from uh, getting into the keyhole and presenting a danger to Traverse Town. Just, oh. making, just making sure I have that on <laughs> if I forgot ours. Okay, we're fine. All right, so we're going to be intentionally targeting one of the limbs, specifically uh, the upper hand, and then uh, instantly depleting its HP basically causes the guard armor to fall over. And now we're swapping into the opposite armor phase. All right, so we're going to guard this incoming attack and then lock on to the lower limb, hit it with an R's, and then this is going to do a very specific sequence of attacks. Wind up. Ooh, nice RNG. Oh, very good. Yeah, you hope that you get the second attack that you can guard. That's exactly what you want to see. Oh, he's floating menacingly. Oh, the nice, good catch. Nice catch, yeah. Uh, lock on to the other thing, please. Why uh, is it locking? Okay, good. On? Sure. Nice. Okay. Why was it locking onto the postcard chest, bro? <laughs> okay. A pretty, pretty good fight, all things considered. Yeah, nicely done. Very, nice. very little nonsense compared to what can actually happen here. And then, uh, as the uh, screen starts to move on that uh, death fade out, uh, you can actually skip the cutscene very early there. That's a very cool thing that uh, you learn when you uh, start picking up this game for the speed run. All right, and uh, we're just going to talk to Sid, and this is going to unlock the pathway to Hall of Bastion. And uh, yeah, I think uh, as we're going to be moving on to uh, Hall of Bastion, there just would probably be a good time for another donation. All right, we've got $50 from Usurpator, who says, just had to donate during the Kingdom Hearts race. So many good memories playing it in my youth. Good luck to the runners, and let's hit that Sephiroth incentive. Greetings from Germany. We've got $10 from Dan the Dapper, who says, Greetings from the East Coast. Had to stay up for this run as Violin was a large inspiration for me to take up Kingdom Hearts as my first ever speedrun game. Best of luck to the runners. This donation goes to the Sephiroth Level 1 Fight. And we're currently at 4861 on that one of 20,000. Make sure you get your donations in for that. Thank you, everybody. I guess another thing that we can note here is uh, the reason that Violin is uh, kind of sparingly using his R's as opposed to blasting whenever he has the opportunity is because Opposite Armor actually has animations and very nice. I actually forgot to use my ether at the start of the fight because I'm so level one brained right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. uh, so yeah, Opposite Armor basically has a few animations where he receives double damage. Uh, with our current strength, we are dealing cap damage with every hit on uh, this kind of lower battle level enemy. Uh, so we actually jump up from 20 HP damage to 40 HP damage with every swing during specific animations. Uh, the one that we take advantage of most often in this category is uh, the animations that he does while parried. Those are, you know, the, uh, an example of uh, when he takes double damage. Mm -hmm. Uh, as we're on the approach to Hollow Bastion, there are going to be more of those enemies that we saw on the Agrabah Gummy mission, where uh, there are going to be gummy ships that fly behind both of our racers here, uh, doing specific movement to avoid any contact with them because they will one-shot you if they hit you from behind. Mm -hmm. Once, one time and you'll never forget. <laughs> Sometimes you got to learn lessons the hard way. Mm -hmm. What's really cool about gummy ship missions is that you'll notice that they both do slightly different movement in order to avoid contact with enemy ships. Just that one of the few ways in which player expression mm -hmm. is kind of neat in this game. Probably another good time for a few donations. All right, we've got a lot for this coming in. This Let's is very go. popular. We got $25 from the Risky Penguin who says, this race has been really close the whole time. It's incredible, simple, and clean. <laughs> Keep it up, and hopefully we get that level one Sephiroth fight. We've got $50 from Conduit, who says, hey, uh, SGDQ, wanted to throw down to see some wild shenanigans occur in one of my favorite games of all time, Kingdom Hearts. Putting this towards the level one Sephiroth fight. Can I get some hype? Hype. hype. Oh, yeah. Let's Thanks. hit it. We've got $50 from Woodborg, who says, Love Kingdom Hearts, love GDQ, keep up the great work, let's get that level one Sephiroth fight. Excellent. 
All right, so now that Mist is touched down in Hollow Bastion, he's going to be moving through the Rising Falls. Uh, most, some people think that you need to get all the way up to Riku. You don't. You kind of just need to get it close enough to him for the next cutscene to trigger. Um, we're going to have our Keyblade stolen away from us by Riku here, and uh, we're going to be left with a wooden sword, so we're going to be dealing no physical damage. Luckily, we have Beast in our party who can deal physical damage, and in addition, all of our magic still works, so uh, we're going to be uh, hitting one enemy that we need in order to progress with uh, magic, and uh, Beast should be able to clean up the rest. Mm -hmm. So it turns out that this next area, the castle gates, are actually locked. So we need to go underground into the waterway in order to uh, open the castle gates. So we'll be taking this bubble, moving through, and uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a little bit of a puzzle section. Uh, Bandit Yoshi, you want to mention a weird thing about the water here? <laughs> oh boy. Yes, Violin taught us this like two days ago. It's great. We, we were like sitting uh, in the practice room like, uh, huh, how'd they, how'd they look over at that? Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll see as... Uh, Miss is going to press one of these upcoming buttons. Um, the water animation and the wall do not line up at all. <laughs> so not this one, but... Uh, the one closest to you. Yeah. Yeah, so take, pay close attention here. See the water? So it's all over that way, you know? <laughs> the gate doesn't quite uh, catch up. It's even funnier on the way back. It's a lot more obvious, too. Yeah, so now that we've opened these switches, uh, that last switch should lower the gate, which uh, allows us to take the bubble to uh, get to the switch that fully unlocks the, uh, the castle gates. Uh, we're going to be encountering a defender here. Defenders have a lot of HP for this point in the game, but the good news is, like I said at the end of Halloween Town, uh, gravity is a spell that deals damage proportional to the maximum HP or current HP of uh, whatever target you're casting it on. And uh, that means even though this defender has a lot of HP, it's going to take a big chunk out of it. And then we're using Triangle to rally Beast, and he nice, excellent kill. Beast right on time. Mm -hmm. I was a little worried he was going to do that a bit early, but it was mm -hmm. just just the perfect time. We I really uh, mentioned it, but uh, Triangle has a nice function in this game where if you're locked onto an enemy uh, and you mash Triangle, your party will aggro towards that enemy. Mm -hmm. Or if you're not locked on anything and you uh, press Triangle, your party will come to wherever you are and follow you. Very important for very for specific circumstances where you just don't want them to uh, mess with the hit counts or, you know. Here's the water. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's, why is it stuck out so much there? That's weird, man. How did you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> we also do a very specific... Uh, we keep a specific distance away from that defender because if we end up too close to it, Sora will burn all of his MP on an Ars Arcanum, and that's very bad on uh, this current stage because we don't deal any physical damage mm -hmm. with our current uh, weapon. Only magic works. All right, so now we're going to make our climb all the way back up to the castle gates. Uh, we're going to be despawning these dark balls really quick by dodge rolling as quickly as we can to the back wall. The beast, unfortunately, right. stuck back there. You can get, like, a nice, fast blue menu, but if beast gets stuck on one of those mm -hmm. rocks, unfortunately. Really minor, though. Not a big deal. Yeah, nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, now we're coming up on uh, Riku 1. Uh, Bani Yoshi, how fun is Riku 1? Oh, well, it's great. It's, uh, <laughs> Like I said, Agrabah is peaceful. Uh, I'm sure this will be peaceful as mm -hmm. well. <laughs> it's only the one of the most universally annoying fights in the entire game. <laughs> not, sure why, not sure why Mist names the split dumb. No. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, so a, a mechanic of Riku 1 is that uh, he will retaliate after every three hits. Um, fortunately, our air combo is exactly three hits, and I believe we have Hurricane Blast equipped so that we can uh, parry. Oh, I actually forgot to re-equip it. <laughs> That's okay. We're fine. Don't worry about it. All right. Then That's we're, a good deal. We'll rely on our party members to help uh, parry Riku as often as possible, and uh, if we can keep Riku in a sort of stun, we can hopefully get a, as many Ars Arcanums as we have MP for. We're looking for Goofy to try to use tornadoes at opportune times. Unfortunately, Goofy did use a lot of tornadoes, but immediately got hit up by Riku. Nice parry there right. from Goofy. Ooh, oh, let's that's go. nice. Oh, I don't have any MP. This might, uh, be, this might be a little sketchy. It's okay. All right, that's a free opening. We're fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, nothing to worry about. Excellent. Nothing, I, nothing to worry about. <laughs> yes, of course. I wasn't worried at the last <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> I need All to re-equip that. <laughs> All right, so now that we've defeated Riku, uh, you know, we have our Keyblade, we have our party members, everything is hunky-dory. Uh, we also get a White Trinity, uh, which we are going to make use of uh, once we get... Uh, Pretty much immediately. Yeah, basically halfway through this next library section, we're going to be, you know, bouncing out of this world, and we're going to be heading straight to Agrabah for an item that we're going to be unlocking with the White Trinity. It's called the Ifrit's Belt. It gives you a plus three strength, and on proud mode, any point to strength 
is going to be extremely useful. It does seem really excessive to go out of these ways uh, just to pick up one or two items here and there, but uh, <laughs> every single point of strength we can get makes a massive difference, and it's pretty much going to be a requirement for the li later stages of the run. Just want to start in the Riku one fight here. Just want to jump in real quick, let everyone know we just passed $5,000 on the Sephiroth fight incentive, so keep those donations coming. Let's hit it. Keep it rolling. Yeah, so the White Trinity that uh, contains the Ifrit belt uh, is going to be in the Cave of Wonders. Luckily, it's just in the first room, so we don't have to go that far. And uh, at this point, we also have a little bit, you know, we have a little bit more resources to deal with anything should it happen, but it really shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Oh Decent my! Decent fight from Violin there. Let's go. I almost died right there. <laughs> <laughs> me, me too, don't worry. <laughs> no, that wasn't close at all, Goofy. <laughs> just bringing Riku It's across. not a problem on run if you're not on the cusp of death like every fight. <laughs> Alright, so now that we get the Ifrit belt, we make our way back to the library save points and continue the puzzle section of Hollow Bastion. Uh, basically, we're going to be uh, rearranging a couple of bookshelves so that they have the proper orders of books. Uh, and then we're going to be uh, touching a wall panel to uh, reach the upper section of the lobby where we fought Riku 1. Fun fact, we're going to be keeping Mava Volume 6, which is yep. that green book that we stole. We're going to be keeping it basically all the way until the end of the game. And then we like sleep in the pod and calm for like a year. So, like, it's very overdue at this yeah, point. Yeah, the, in, in so. the librarian for Hollow Bastion is really not going to like us. No. I'm sorry, Petals. <laughs> <When you get, laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, so we have to get four emblem pieces in order to unlock the door that uh, you're going to see at like, the very top of that uh, screen and Mist's side. And uh, in order to unlock the emblem door pieces, we have to uh, shoot all of the candles around the upper ring of the arena uh, with fire magic. We have to use Red Trinity to break that statue. Uh, Mist also broke a couple of the urns that were uh, closest to the door. And uh, now he's going to be pushing this statue. And uh, once he lights the final candles, it should be all four pieces unlocked. Mm -hmm. There is actually like a really uh, interesting movement you can do here, but it's basically like TAS only. Or if, it's, it, you can do it, but if you fail it, you lose like 20 seconds and only saves like two or three <laughs> or something crazy, crazy small like that. So uh, yeah. All right, so now we're going to be picking up all of the envelope pieces in one fell swoop. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. It's a very cool movement that you can do when you're on the sliding part of that rail. Uh, let me do a menu really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, this needs to come off for that, yes. Um, I'm also going to take Beast Ethers really quick and set my items up in a very particular way for the next few parts coming up here. Yeah, we're going to be using a lot of items going into uh, the next two fights, which are Maleficent and Dragon Maleficent. No. And it's critical that Mist and Violin have the items set up in the proper order so that they don't really have to think about what item they use at what time. Mm -hmm. As well as putting on the Ifrit spot that we just got and giving Beast White thing. That'll be helpful for uh, the revisit later. All right, and then once we're done skipping this cutscene where uh, Riku is uh, very nervous about the fact that he just lost his first fight. He uh, got up there so fast. <laughs> Uh, Bandit Yoshi, do you want to explain the uh, cool despawn thing that we do in the next, uh, two, uh, in not this room, but the room after? Yeah, so here we're going to see two Wyverns spawn. Uh, there's a couple of different strategies here. Uh, this is going to center his camera, aggro his party on those Wyverns, and then try to make his way over to this gummy piece that we really want in this Should be chest. Fine. It looks good. Nice. You want, we're Very looking good. for that blue menu, yes. and that was really nice. Some that gummy. chest contains a Haste 2 gummy, which is a, a better accelerator than what we currently have on. And uh, the, getting the blue menu not only helps us with uh, opening that chest quickly, but also allows us to uh, touch this crystal and get to the next area very swiftly. All right, so now we've got a little bit of an auto-scroller segment. There are going to be uh, three wizards that appear once this uh, platform stops midway through its uh, trajectory. Um, do we have Goofy Dub? Sure. <laughs> oh. I was just trying to make sure I was over. There we go. Beautiful. Look at the boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I need to get situated for this uh, next back fight. Back to business. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a quick one, two, one, two, one, two, three combo allows you to dispatch these wife, uh, wizards. Bad energy. It's okay. Yeah, you'd hope that you don't get a teleport or uh, a DM that the wizards can do. Uh, I guess we should explain that. Desperation moves are uh, like uninterruptible attacks that uh, basically prevent you from uh, physically damaging your enemy. 
uh, and they usually take a long time. The wizards have a particular one where they just cast a bunch of thunderbolts. <laughs> very nice. Let's see if these wyvern. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll care about you too for a minute, but not very much. Um, uh, <laughs> you're more important. Goofy is kind of a really big MVP in Kingdom Hearts One for a variety of reasons. Espe usually, like, especially in the end game. Yes. You see here on Unviolence side a perfect example of a wyvern being somewhere that Dang, you dude. can do nothing about. And it's just mean, dude. Mm. Can't quite get that blue menu that we're looking for right now. Uh, Mist there we go. grabbed a blue trinity, which contained a megalixir and two cottages. Uh, we're going to be making use of those a little bit later in the run. Um, but uh, right now, we're going to uh, be... Here comes uh, Dumbo Skip, if someone would like to explain Ooh, that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, okay, so... This is why we picked it up earlier. All that work we did uh, to get Dumbo is going to come to uh, fruition here. We're going to summon Dumbo. Um, and instead of, usually the game wants you to like go uh, complete this like little puzzle thing. You could even call it a puzzle. Uh, but we're just going <laughs> to skip all that. We're going to summon Dumbo, fly him up as high as he can go, and then dismiss him and then grab that lead. Beautiful. Excellent. And we just skipped several uh, rooms worth of work. All right, and so now we're coming into the Maleficent fight. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm going to need some hardcore Good focus luck. for this. Yes, absolutely. This fight can go badly extremely quick. Uh, another peaceful fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's do it. Go time. So we're going to jump up onto Maleficent's platform here, and then uh, we're going to do a very specific string of hits before we launch into an Ars Arcanum. Uh, we're going to be launching Ars Arcanum as often as we can, refilling our MP whenever we need it. I'm just going to finish this Ars, Ars here, refilling his MP. Yeah, when doing Ars, if you go for extra bashes, you do not want to get the final one. Alright, as soon as this Ars finishes, he's gonna use an arrow, and then he's gonna pop an elixir immediately to refill his MP. Fly back on, that was really nice. Alright, hopefully those defenders stay at bay. Oh okay, this might be okay. this should be okay. This could be good, this could be good. I think we're good. Hello? Yes, let's go. Right. <laughs> okay. Whew. That was what you want to see. Uh, very, yeah. very involved fight. A lot of uh, precise inputs. You got to go very quickly. Yeah, that went off, you know, relatively without any hitch whatsoever. One slight stumble, but we in there. All right. Now we're coming up into Dragon Maleficent, and this is going to be a fight that burns pretty much every item we have left. Uh, well, every item that we have left currently in Sora's menu. We're going to be equipping a few extras. Um, and these three bottom abilities. Good. And uh, this fight is extremely focus intensive, just like the last one, so I'll let you guys take it away again. Yeah, go for it. So uh, Dragon Maleficent can be very aggressive and uh, very vicious. Uh, she can move her head around a lot. We're going to immobilize her with stop, and uh, we're going to be keeping up a loop where we basically do a full combo, one hit, and stop. Whenever Mist is about to run out of MP, he's going to throw an item to replenish it, and then we're basically just going to keep up the loop as often as we can. Hopefully we should be able to land it. Violin coming up on Maleficent here. Hopefully he gets the same kind of fight that Mist just did. Looking good so far. Defender's coming up. All right, arrow, elixir, hopefully everything. Ooh. Okay. Looking good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the defender just like dropping off that platform. Okay, we got it. Nice. Oh, excellent. Oh. Okay, just one more hit. There we go. Okay, good. <laughs> I actually dropped one or two hits there, but thankfully you have a tiny Ooh. bit of leeway. You don't have to be absolutely perfect. But uh, Violin barely, like, one hit Oh from my death. goodness, that, that, defender was, out. that was nuts. I see. I, yeah. That defender was just protecting her. They're holding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw your health and I was like, oh my. <laughs> Personal yeah. SGDQ bodyguard. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Miss getting the Dragon Maleficent kill when he did was uh, pretty solid. Uh, Stumbled a little bit, but it, mm -hmm. able to recover. There's, you can give a little bit of leeway for mistakes, luckily, but. Yeah, you pretty much have to hit like 90 to 95% of your inputs during that, or it just kind of devolves into a complete disaster. That's good. All right, so now uh, this is kind of an inflection point for Proud. Normally, uh, we don't have as much damage uh, for certain fights as level one does or beginner, but uh, at this point in the game, we're basically going to be dealing almost as much damage as beginner mode, uh, the maximum amount of damage that a category can basically pump out. Um, 
So we have Riku Ansem. Uh, Riku basically allowed Ansem to possess him for a little bit of extra power so that he can get Sora back in this rematch. Mist is going to basically stagger and then go into an Ars Arcanum. And then he's going to try to stagger him again, get into another Ars Arcanum. And we should be able to clean up phase one pretty easily. All right, great. He's got his hand powered up. He's in phase two. And now Mist is going to try to avoid uh, Riku's Dark Aura Desperation move as often as he can. If he can get the stagger back in. All right. He's going to try to do a five-hit loop to keep Riku staggered. The reason that he can do this is because Riku Ansem now retaliates after four hits, but uh, if you're quick enough with your air combos, you can sneak in an extra hit before he staggers. There we go. Excellent. A little, uh, little bit of nangling during the second phase there. He got away from me once, but quickly caught him again. So. Very nice Dragon Bell from Violin there. Very good. Excellent. And Y'all's Hollow Bastions have been pretty good, RNG notwithstanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except for the Wyvern. Yeah, we don't <laughs> talk about Wyvern. <laughs> All right, so now that uh, Mist has defeated Riku Ansem, he's going to turn into a uh, little Shadow Heartless, and uh, we're going to be making our way to reunite with Kyrie, Donald, and Goofy. And then once we do, we'll be uh, jettisoned back to Traverse Town, and uh, we'll have to make our way back here to Hollow Bastion, climb up through the entire castle again. Um, but we have a little bit of time for a quick donation. All right, we have uh, we have $25 from Ark that says the Kingdom Hearts series is super nostalgic for both myself and my partner, so we love seeing them at GDQ. Good luck to the runners, and let's get the Sephiroth incentive met. And an update on that, we're at $5,161 of our $20,000 goal on that one. Let's make sure to get those donations in for that incentive. All right, now hopefully Violin gets as clean a Riku Ansem fight as Miz did just a little bit ago. Uh, two hits and do a uh, R's right here. Another hit here and R's. Putting Riku into this like power up phase of like getting to his. Uh, uh, like he's not powering up here. There okay, he is, there. Okay. So we have to yeah. make sure uh, as soon as he hits his green bar is when he can DM. So he's not quite there. And now he is. Okay, so now if we mess up this loop. Uh, Riku will do his DM, which loses about like 10, 15 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure that if you've ever <laughs> With the R's this... finish. Nice. nice, it paid off. Let's go. Very aggressive, but uh, if you can finish the fight off a few seconds faster if it works. A uh, little inconsistent with the potential <laughs> desperation move, but uh, I respect it and it paid off. Good for you, man. Yeah, Riku's Dark Aura Desperation move. Uh, if you've ever played this game on PS2 you, uh, and suffered a death to that attack, um, it's probably just as dangerous here on Proud um, and also wastes a fair amount of time, even though it, it technically goes faster on uh, you know 60 FPS consoles and PC. All right, so now we're back in Traverse Town. Um, we've been locked out of our usual path to get back to Hollow Bastion. So Sid has basically told us that uh, there's a gummy that allows for an alternate path that we can grab. In order to do that, we're going to be going into the waterway, which, uh, by the way, how are we doing on the Oathkeeper uh, cutscene incentive? It does not look like it will be met. Oh, what Unfortunate. Thing. We still got Sethi, though. Let's pull for Sethi. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah, this is where we would do the uh, Oathkeeper cutscene glitch. Um, and that cutscene is uh, us getting the Navi Gummy for the new <laughs> Rato. Oh, what is going on here? <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> this is normal. Yeah, if you enter that cutscene, that's kind of how the glitch starts. But, that's a, <laughs> but yeah, just a little teaser. You can kind of uh, screw up Sora's little actors there. Uh, now that uh, you know, we're going to be leaving Kyrie behind here. In Better get Vonkless, I did. <laughs> Pressure's oh on, man. Oh, boy. You got it. I believe in you. Yes, Let's go. double bonkless, okay. Don't ask that much, it's, uh, it's very important that, we, <laughs> we, that Donald doesn't hit us in the face with the uh, staff there. <laughs> Don't ask why, just trust us. Yes, uh, so very, very important. Uh, another very important thing, uh, Miss returning uh, to uh, Fairy Godmother here, we want Mushu for, uh, for late game, and you'll, you'll see why. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to explain it now, but um, it, it'll be a sight to see. We also got the Oathkeeper Keyblade from Kyrie. Uh, she's basically, you know, giving us a good luck charm, hoping us, uh, you know, that we do the best and stay safe on the remainder of the run. Um, the Oathkeeper is uh, basically like Fairy Harp. It gives us a plus one MP. Uh, it's just a little bit stronger than Fairy Harp. Uh, we're going to be switching off between sort of a MP focused build and a strength focused build going into the final area of the game. And uh, so we're going to be seeing a lot of uh, Oathkeeper, as well as a uh, Keyblade that we're going to be picking up in Hollow Bastion once we return there. But before we do that, we're going to be going into the Gummy menu one last time for a final upgrade. Uh, we're going to be swapping 
uh, or actually equipping the Haste 2 Gummy onto uh, our current model. Such a beautiful ship, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Very compact, efficient. And so now we can take the warp hole that's off to the side of Travers Town and make our way back to Hollow Bastion. Uh, Mist being a little bit judicious with his use of uh, Haste Gummy going through these There's bridges. a lot of enemies <laughs> here. You don't want to run into stuff. Okay. All right, cool. This is a very long gummy, and uh, the game throws a tremendous amount of obstacles and gummy ships your way, and uh, you really, like, it, it, with this being proud mode, you will die in, in, like, two hits to everything, if not one hit to certain things, so you've really got to be careful here. Yeah, it's a, it's a visual assault on, you know, your eyes as much as it is on the gummy itself. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be basically three zones that we're going to move through. This is the second of third, and uh, once we move through the third, uh, we're going to be do doing something a little bit... Uh, a little bit interesting. Also, an important thing, I'm not boosting until this next load zone uh, comes through just because uh, the game is in like a fixed state where it can't actually progress until a certain amount of time has passed, and uh, we just save that for when the game is progressing again. All right, Mist is going to do very specific movement so that all of the gummy ships that are, uh, would ram into him kind of fly past and over him instead. And very particular about this specific gummy, because we came from Hollow Bastion back to Traverse without actually leaving the world, and if Traverse is the world we're coming from for this Whirlpool, uh, a bunch of blocks, don't worry about that. <laughs> um, we can actually quit out of the gummy and uh, fly right to Hollow Bastion without actually finishing the gummy. Yeah, shout out to Spike Vegeta for that one. Mm-hmm. So now we're touching down in Hall of Bastion for the second time. Uh, Beast is going to rejoin our party, and he's going to be just as good with us now as he was in the waterway when we couldn't deal any physical damage. Um, we're going to be making our way up through Rising Falls, and then once we do, we're going to be making use of Dumbo yet again. Um, going to do some, uh, try to do some quick movement here to get a uh, Mega Elixir while also making the cycle bits a little tight. A thing to notice about summons is you can't use them unless you're in combat. So uh, you'll see Mist and Violin uh, kind of roll forward until they spawn in enemies so that they can use Dumbo for the skip that they're going to attempt. And looks like the cycle will be good. Should be good. Nice. Excellent. Yeah, very good. All right. Dumbo skip two. Let's go. Only wizard. Only wizard. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, so basically walk forward a little bit, do two dodge rolls. Nice. Spawn Excellent. These run back, immediately summon Dumbo. That was really fast. Not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good start. All right, so we're going to iframe through an attack that the wizard is going to do. It's a fire pillar. While you're on Dumbo, you basically can't be interrupted. You're totally invincible. And uh, we pop up onto this arch, and we hop over to the same crystal that we did the first Dumbo skip on. And no, uh, that's funny. That's okay. yeah, he's taking a long time to get out of here. It's OK, though. OK, we right. take that. OK. Mm -hmm. As long as we get over there, we're, we're happy. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be going onto this auto scroller section one more time, and uh, I believe Mist is going to do a, a quick menu here. Yes, just a few more things. Uh, I'm trying to think before <laughs> I actually get on there. We've had to juggle a bunch of stuff. Uh, thinking, yes, okay. I'm going to put on the Oathkeeper. I want to take off Beast's top ability for his bomb ability, which is the critical plus. I'm going to actually put on guard, and because Goofy can be annoying in this fight. Oh, I also want to put on uh, gravity on my customize. Um, Goofy can really just use his tornado attack and push uh, Wizard all the way to the side of the arena, and it can kind of uh, confuse things. So I'm taking that off for this specific fight, but I will be putting it on again right after it. All right, so we're hoping at the uh, beginning of this fight, uh, we're going to try to aggro Beast onto that wizard. Oh, shoot. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, Beast. Ooh, that was a good roar. <laughs> oh, OK. Oh, the wizard's stunned, and you only have the yellow opera. That's pretty good. Uh oh, oh did Goofy proc him to teleport? Perhaps. Oh, Lord. Oh, he didn't DM. What a blunder. Let's, oh, he <laughs> right. threw for content. He did. Usually when a wizard is super low on health, uh, they will do a desperation move, which is like where they uh, use their lightning cast nonstop kind of uh, kamikaze. But thankfully, we just blew. You know what, Beast? I'm proud of you. <laughs> nice. His nice, dreamy blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Not as dreamy as yours. Oh. <laughs> You're so sweet. You flatter me. <laughs> All right, so uh, on our way up here, we're going to be collecting an item called the Royal Crown. Uh, it's basically going to diminish our strength, but it's going to give us plus two to our max MP. Uh, the reason is, like I mentioned before, we're going to be swapping between a max MP uh, maximizing build and a strength build. We're going to be needing it for uh, an end game strat, like basically like almost 10 minutes before the I'm end. I'm going to be short game. MP. That's OK, though. Um, just do that. It's OK. We usually have like one or two extra ethers in case of emergency, and that for that exact reason. Yeah, you want to make sure that you have three MP whenever you want to summon Dumbo. That's how much it takes. Mm -hmm. And I was going to be just shy of that, unfortunately, but that's fine. Yeah, you, you're going to be and uh, you. 
To collect the royal crown, you need to cast a gravity on a platform. So uh, you want to make sure that you have around 4 MP to be able to use Let's gravity see, and Dumbo here. Okay. <laughs> I said I was going to do that and I forgot, but better late than never. Let's see how Beast does on Violin's end here. He can kill the entire group if he, uh, yeah, if he lands that crit. Whoa! Very nice. Oh, man. Oh, no. Goofy. Oh, yeah, whoa, nice. okay. Wait. Oh, wow. Good job, Goofy. Goofy Clutch? Goofy. Oh, man. Solo we take that. One. We take that. That is a certified Goofy W. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very good. All right, so now we're going to... Uh, Mist is going to be doing the same Dumbo skip as before. And uh, now when we come back into the... Uh, Castle Chapel, we're going to be touching the save points so that we replenish HP and MP. Uh, and uh, Very particular movement for this next part coming up. Yeah, we're going to be collecting the Oblivion Keyblade, which, uh, when we're going for our strength build, is going to be the, the Keyblade of choice. Um, it's going to decrease our max MP, but the value it has in strength is just too good. Yeah, shout outs to Majoris for finding this. Yes, <laughs> I remember laughing this. Yeah, so we're doing very specific movement here to uh, try and despawn enemies as quickly as possible so that we can get the blue menu, grab this chest, and yeah, then... Yeah, let's go. Nice. Uh, just oh, yeah. No, that's okay, though. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the enemy should be, should be spawn. Okay, that's nice. good. Yeah. Uh, Mist is, uh, shot a Fyraga there to... or I guess it's just a Fyra. It's not Fyraga yet. So, uh, it's, yeah. uh, <laughs> he shot a Fyra there in order to uh, get the most orange bar that he can so that he can uh, pump out as many Ars Arcanums during this fight as possible. We hope that party members uh, throw MP items and uh, Goofy does MP gifts. We just want Tornadoes. And tornadoes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he doesn't have MP gifts yeah, yet. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It, it, we're like just before the point where he would actually get MP gifts. Mm -hmm. But basically, yeah, we want... Um, MP to be restored as often as possible so that we can get Ars Arcanums to uh, down the behemoth as often as we can. Good RNG. Good RNG, yeah. We want him to do this laser attack a little faster than his jump attack. Nice. And then when he stomps and does the thunder rain, uh, you have to time your dodge rolls very, you know, very well in order to make sure that you actually avoid taking damage. I'm not going to go for it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, risky, uh, yeah. very, very, being very aggressive is a death sentence in crowd most of the time. That's fine. Oh, what the heck is this? Oops. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice uh, silly, a bit of a silly ending there, but that's <laughs> fine. We take that. Generally, he was uh, pretty kind. All right, so now we get an Omega Arts for defeating Behemoth. It's another strength boosting accessory that we'll make use of. And uh, there's a thing that uh, Bandit Yoshi and I oh, have yes. to mention that. Uh, now that we've reached this part oh, of the game. Oh, what was it? I, uh, I forgot. <laughs> you want to join in violin, or should we... Uh, sure, sure. Uh, okay. yeah, help, me, help remind me. I'll I, try. I, I, I forget. Gotcha. What was it? Well, you see, there's something very important that we have to disclose about it, this It, it goes something right? like this. Yeah. yeah. Well, right after. <laughs> Here comes the build-up. You ready? All right. Let's do it, lads. Let's do it. All right. Well, we cannot, we cannot skip, skip this cutscene because this cutscene is an unskippable cutscene that we cannot skip because it is unskippable. Shout out to Biscuit 047. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> that part we that part we, we did didn't... not plan to say that in unison. <laughs> we, we did not script that. Fantastic. <laughs> Same brain cell. Jinx, you owe me a soda mist. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, it doesn't matter whether you're on PC or console, this part of the game is totally unscapable. So we basically just let it play. Uh, if you're you know doing this run at home, then usually this is the point where you have a free bathroom break. Mm -hmm. I think we should uh, talk more details about the Sephiroth incentive. What is what is that going to be like, Mist? Oh goodness gracious! Well, uh, you will we will be at our lowest possible level at level one since we didn't unfortunately we unfortunately didn't see the level one run this particular GDQ. But we still have a chance to have some level one gameplay showcased, and we will also only have one MP to our entire name. Uh, just the most difficult settings possible, effectively for what's basically the most difficult fight in the entire game. And we're uh, going to be racing it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> if we meet the $20,000 incentive. Yes. Which, uh, by the way, how are we doing on that? We're currently at $5,537 out of $20,000. We got to so pick up the pace. So we got a we got a little bit to go, but we can still do it. We can absolutely do it. I believe in the community. Let's go. All right, so now uh, the Princesses of Heart are going to give us our final upgrade to magic. It uh, bumps our fire spell up from Tier 2 to Tier 3. We now have Fyraga. 
and uh, Mist is going to be equipping the Oath Keeper in place of the Oblivion. And uh, we have light on Goofy, and I'm going to take t Goofy Tornado off for his bottom three abilities. Also uh, giving me uh, giving Goofy MP gift, which is going to be a very vital uh, ability specifically for this last ending card here. Yeah, and now we're slotting into our final Gummy mission. Uh, hopefully, you know we don't die, and uh, but I don't think we will because uh, Mr. Violin had practiced this enough. Again, uh, the loading instance here, we want to wait until this goes away so we can boost again. Like so. So there are going to be a couple of white gummy ships that appear. They're called Omega ships. And uh, they're called Omega ships because they, they're if, huge. <laughs> if, if, if you touch them, it is the end. But uh, Mrs. and Violin, when he gets there, uh, they're going to be, uh, you know, drawing enemy attention to specific corners of the screen so that uh, they don't corral into the tunnel that we end up having to go through. Yeah, so carefully sliding over to that part of mm -hmm. the screen. This manipulates all of them to that side of the screen, and then uh, slide in this little spot right here, and we should be good. Nice. All yeah, right, there's good. usually always that one stationary Omega ship at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that's basically the final gummy mission, and now we've reached the last area of the game. This is end of the world, and uh, end of the run. In, 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 <laughs> in, in multiple meanings. <laughs> uh, we're going to be cupping up on a couple of forced fights here. The first one is going to be invisibles. These are mean. Yes. <laughs> we don't like these heartless very much. They have 300 HP each, so they're basically their own mini boss. And uh, whoa, that was a clean stop. Get over here, buddy. All right. We hope to avoid the Invisibles DM where they plunge a sword into the ground and then summon a ring oh, of no. dark magic around. Ah, uh, get, no. get him, get him, Oh, he didn't oh. DM. Oh. Let's go, let's yes. go. Good. Oh, he, he blundered again. So nice. <laughs> let's so, go. So many Heartless throwing for content. Oh my goodness, that wizard didn't DM, that the Invisible didn't DM. What is going on? They're, huh? they're paid actors. <laughs> paid actors. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, important, uh, especially in Proud here, is especially with the, the Oath Keeper Keyblade equipped, mm -hmm. you want to prioritize doing damage with magic because our actual swings are not doing very much damage at all. You'll see that it uh, spikes back up when we have the Oblivion Keyblade equipped. All right, so now we've got Angel Stars. We're going to be spreading gravities across each of them and then doing some combos to clean them up. It's basically player choice as to whether or not you go with the uh, Oath Keeper or Oblivion build. I'm gonna be a little safe here, just yeah. in case. Yeah, they're, they're both equally inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if those dudes get off that little charging attack there, they can duplicate themselves, and uh, it's just a complete mess. So I just stopped that to make it so that it, that didn't happen. Mist is positioning himself near this elixir chest once the Angel Star wave is dismissed. And uh, like we said before, we're going to need every elixir we can going into final fights. We're also going to be rolling towards this cottage to pick it up in the red chest. Mm -hmm. uh, you only really need to encounter the invisibles and the angel stars when you move through the end of the world. So we're basically oh. done with Mob Heartless for the final dimension section. But we are going to be coming up on a little bit of a retrain of the behemoth enemy. This one's the arch behemoth. Nice. Arch behemoth doesn't Dude, have the same let's kind go. of... Yeah, that was a pretty clean fight. Yeah, it was really clean. <laughs> Uh, Arch Behemoth doesn't have the same amount of gravity resistance that the previous Behemoth did. So at the start of the fight, we're going to be throwing a couple of gravities onto him. And then uh, Goofy is going to replenish our MP when we run out. Excellent. Get up there quick. Okay. And now we have just enough MP for an Ars Arcanum, and we should be able to knock Arch Behemoth over. Nice. We get a couple of free hits on him now that he's downed. Getting a two, like a one cycle is pretty much impossible, unfortunately, with the damage output. It's all right. That was crazy. That was really good. <laughs> Jeez. Huh. I but got crits on like all of them. Let's go, dude. You're turning on the gas. And good. nice. And picking up all the money so our party doesn't, so that we can, uh, you know, get the faster load coming into this next zone. Oh boy, and fun stuff is happening soon. <laughs> yeah. I believe now is, uh, or right before the next section, is when we switch over to our uh, MP build. Yes. So uh, we're going to be equipping the Royal Crown for the plus two and the Oath Keeper for the plus one. And the reason that we want to have as much magic as possible is uh, so that we can use Simba to full effect again. Uh, we didn't mention this at the time, but uh, we received a cheer ability from uh, defeating Parasite Cage 1 
that went on to Goofy, and then we received another one from defeating Maleficent, and that one went on to Donald. Cheer is an ability that basically extends the length of time a summon can come out. It basically functions as, as if it were an additional MP bar, and uh, when you build up uh, the summon gauge enough for Simba, uh, you're able to get five ticks off of his roar, and that allows you to basically one-shot an entire wave of Heartless. And basically we're going into all these terminals right here because we, we've never set foot in Olympus Coliseum. We've never set foot in uh, Atlantica either. And basically the way the game that checks this is if you haven't sealed the specific keyhole to a world, you need to defeat a, a mob of enemies in the respective terminals to progress. Although we will be going through the 100 Acre Wood, uh, that's mandatory regardless of whether or not you seal the keyhole. Mm -hmm. Luckily it's peaceful. It's yeah. a nice little respite before. A actually peaceful this time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not lying this time, I swear. <laughs> it, it just contains a Mega Elixir chest and a save point, which we will make use of both. And... Boom. Nice. Very good. All right. So uh, now we're going into the Atlantica portal because, like Mist said, we've never touched down there either. And uh, we're going to be casting Fyragas on a couple of sheltering zones that appear. When the sheltering zones are defeated, Two aqua tanks are going to spawn in. One of them's got a couple of screwdrivers. We're going to cast gravities on those aqua tanks and then use Fyraga to clean things up. So let's see what we got here. All right. Five each. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Here come the aqua tanks. The gravities. And good. They were both flattened. All right. Fyraga to clean it up. Clean. Very clean. Excellent. All right. You want to wait until that uh, screen uh, color changes from yellow to blue. If you go through that loading zone too quickly, uh, the game will actually consider that portal not complete, and you'll have to fight all those enemies again. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can be too fast, and that's a bigger problem in speedrun than you'd think it would be. Yeah. yeah. All right, so now we're coming up with the Hollow Bastion portal, which is also mandatory, uh, despite the fact that you have to seal the keyhole in order to get to this point. Um, shout out to Big Sid 119 for this upcoming strat. Yeah, so you want to tap the first invisible closest to you and then spread out Looking as many good. gravities as you can. Looking good. Uh, this is a very dangerous point where, like, very all nice. of the. That was so good. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you're in such a narrow hallway and all the invisibles hit for such hard damage, you basically want to immobilize them as often as you can because it's just extremely dangerous. And that was clean. Mm -hmm. Oh, very important. Before we move on, I uh, need to put on, on EXP zero. And if uh, <laughs> people could explain why that's very important now. Ooh, I, well, we're, I, we're minimalists, and we don't want XP for the yeah, rest of the month. <laughs> yeah, that's a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, EXP zero is an ability that uh, you get automatically at the beginning of proud mode. Uh, obviously, for normal proud any percent, we don't equip it uh, until this point in the run. Uh, and the reason that we do it is because we want to get as much level up uh, as possible so that we can uh, start dealing uh, capped damage on enemies in final fights. Mm -hmm. But we do throw it on here because now that we've you know, gotten as much strength as we're going to need, uh, we can now use the damage storage property. Watch that health bar really quick. Uh, yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a fun little uh, tactic here. Yeah, if you all have never seen Mushu clean up this boss fight in particular, uh, yeah, it's really satisfying. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, so basically we go into that fight, do a three-hit combo. There's this weird uh, attribute with EXP zero where if you end on a th finisher and then use magic, oh, your magic has finisher damage. And yeah. so each fireball coming out of Mushu does finisher damage. Yeah. Um, in particular, you want to make sure that you do a base combo finisher. Uh, if you're in the air and you throw out a hurricane blast, it won't engage. It has to be, you know, a combo finisher, just your default one. Yeah, luckily in that fight, it doesn't matter because we're flying. But. Yeah. It also works on the ground, by the way. Yeah. There are only a handful of things that disengage it, but we'll touch on those as we progress. All right, so now we're going through the linked worlds uh, mob battle. Uh, there's going to be several waves of Heartless that appear, but the first one is an Arch Behemoth. This is the last time we'll see this enemy, so hopefully we take it out fast. Goofy with the MP gift there, real clutch. All right, and then should be downed right here. Excellent. We want to finish him off before uh, he gets back up. It's uh, invincible again. And What's then, really important uh, here is we want to get to the other end of the room, and it's, we want to get this very tight window of a blue menu so we can... Uh, put our MP build back on for the rest of the remaining <laughs> rounds. Yeah, if you run into that emblem, you get a longer uh, chance for it, so very important you make it over there in time. Yeah, th uh, throwing a cottage there to uh, refill HP and MP for the entire party because uh, we want to make sure that we take care of ourselves through uh, the Invisibles wave in particular. 
We're going to be shooting these Dark Balls with Fyragas. Each one only takes two Fyragas to defeat. And then there's one that should spawn in. All right, excellent. Miss is going to call Donald the Goofy to this far end of the arena, and then he's going to uh, throw out gravities on as many of these invisibles as possible. It's looking good so far. This is very nice. This is... Wow. Whoa. All right, and both of them are... Good. Yo! Oh, my ears. <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> very nice. That was, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was ideal. <laughs> that, that was pretty ideal, yeah. I think ideal might be an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> well. So now that we have 9 MP and our party members have one cheer each, we should be able to take out the remaining waves with just Simba. Uh, here come the Angel Stars, and bye, Angel Stars. Bye. <laughs> oh, no, there's another wave. Oh, wait, no, we can just kill it all the Simba. No, that's all good. <laughs> yeah, we, get, we have just enough of 9 MP. It's crazy yeah. how tight this is. We yeah. have just enough MP. Yeah, check that uh, orange MP bar at the very end of this. So we need like a second or two just to get another thing off in time. Like, see, like, right, look how close it is. Just, just there. Yeah. Just barely enough. Like, two seconds. Beautiful. All right. We All did right. it. <laughs> and now we're out of here. Yeah, that's probably the hardest, you know, fight in terms of, like, if you die at the end, you get such horrible time loss. Let's see, violins here. All right, Mist is going to pick up this Mega Elixir chest in the final rest area, touch this save point, and now we're going into final fights. Oh. Ooh, oh, okay. okay. Can we get him? Good. All right. Good. Got it. Nice. Very solid. Oh, get in there. <laughs> All right. So we're going to be taking advantage of damage storage one more time going into uh, our first fight with Ansem. Uh, so hopefully uh, we get a clean fight. It should be relatively streamlined, but there are, he does have his tendencies of being kind of obnoxious, but it should be okay. Yeah, a couple yeah. different openings can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but. if he kills your party members, then uh, you have to heal them in order to use a summon again. Get over there. All right. Nice. It's also very important to note we need to do a regular finisher to uh, make use of EXP Zero's damage storage capabilities. We do have Hurricane Blast on, and if that's the finisher you get, you actually don't activate it. All right, so uh, same deal as Chernabog. Watch that HP bar. little bit of the tricky movement to make sure that he gets hit. We're staying below the disc so that uh, we can just keep up the stream. Good. Nice. nice. And then shooting Fyragas here so that we can get a little bit more orange meter going into uh, final fights here. Uh, we are now going to be using our strength build and making the most of, uh, you know... And give Goofy a ray of light for MP. Uh, pop this, and we're just going to put on our remaining uh, elixirs and mega elixirs for final fights. All those items we spent... Uh, Time stockpiling are coming to fruition now. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and surprisingly, we're going to be using like half of them in just the next couple of <laughs> fights. The uh, first fight. Yeah, so using ours, because uh, the first seven hits of ours have iframes, uh, using that to uh, avoid taking damage on the shock wave when uh, Dark Side 3 punches his hand into the ground. Which, uh, by the way, we found this guy again, and now he did. <laughs> and here comes one of the most intricate fights of the entire run. Yeah, Miss wants to make sure that he has at least three MP for an Ars Arcanum, and he's going to want to time it specifically around uh, when Ansem has half health in this fight. We're going to try and skip the DM. Yes, basically here we're looping Ansem through, just avoiding his attacks, uh, staggering him, hitting him from behind, and what we're looking for is for uh, that yellow bar to uh, fully show up, and then we're going to have to try to DM skip. All right, it should be right after this. So three staggers, ours at a particular time. Excellent. All right, Perfect. that's one DM skip. Nice guard. Yeah, guarding through that charge attack. So he won't try to DM here, but he will try to DM next time. He retaliates. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so we got to see if we can get the stagger again. Go for it. Get him, dude. Yes, nice. let's Perfect. go, DMless. Okay, good. Getting DMs there loses you about like 15, 20 seconds, so mm -hmm. it's very important that we skip those. Very particular strat for Ansem 3, because this is proud mode and we would die horribly if we try to brute force it. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I'll let you guys take that away too. Yeah, we're going to be taking advantage of damage storage yet again, except uh, we don't have Mushu because our party members have been locked out, so uh, we have to be our own Mushu and spit our own fireballs <laughs> at Ansem 3. Uh, we're going to be replenishing our MP with elixirs whenever possible. Uh, we're going to only use a set amount because we want to make sure that we have, uh, M you know, MP restoring items yeah, for later fights. Dodging a couple of lasers there. 
I also no. want to make sure we do not over damage uh, Anson 3 here, otherwise he'll go into a, a phase early. Perfect. Yeah, around halfway through uh, his orange bar is uh, where the HP barrier for his DM pops out. Uh, his DM is basically a long string of uninterruptible lasers. We do not want to see it if we can help it. Also, they, yeah, go, you're going to say it. Yeah, their <laughs> mist uh, flew very far away. You might wonder why we want to be close and deal damage. Uh, there's actually a Heartless that spawn. If we're far away enough, they'll despawn. Because uh, we do not want to deal with them. They'll make the fight. Yo, nice, nice fight from fight violin. Nice, job, nice violin. fight from DM. Yeah. <laughs> nice fight from violin getting the unskip. I can't believe that worked because he was right up against the wall. <laughs> yeah. He's a little high on HP here. This might be a bit problematic. So I think it'll be okay. I think he'll just barely get it. Yeah, I think we're going to clean it up right here. Yes, nice. just made it. Just made it. Okay, good. Just before the DM started. Uh, so here, Miss standing there, dodge rolling at a very particular time. To oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, it's dude. a white screen. He rolled too early. Uh, so we're going to finish Shadow's core, but we can't see anything. <laughs> He'll be okay. We did get to skip a cutscene very fast, though. Yeah, that's true. So Miss is going to have to use some audio cues here. Okay, I got it. Nice. Need to find it somewhere. Yes, I got it. Oh. Okay, holy moly. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> Okay, that's, I know, sorry, yeah, there we go. Uh, if you do it too soon, that can happen. I didn't do that on purpose, I promise. Yeah, you want to time it specifically so that the fight reloads and you can't see everything, but if you're too early, you get the white screen and suddenly you're just kind of, it, I would say wandering in the dark, but uh, no, those you're are very much not. Very bright. All right, so now we have the artillery. Uh, this is a pretty dangerous fight on Proud, which is why uh, we're throwing an arrow to reduce the amount of damage that we take. We're going to try and spread our finishers across those uh, larger artillery cannons if we can help it. All right, doing pretty good so far. Nice. They're not being too mean. But Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Slick. <laughs> huh. All right, good answer free from violin Okay, here. that's fine. Ooh, okay. <laughs> You guys will actually get to see what this fight looks like now. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. All right, so now we're coming up into... We couldn't see the Shadow Core, but now we're going into the Dark Ball Core. Uh, we're going to be doing a very specific stop. Oh, my. Oh, wow, Ooh, that almost got cute. all of them. All right, and then once they're all immobilized, uh, Mist throws out another quick stop and then uh, does as many combos on Dark Balls as he can, cleaning up the rest with physical hits and Ars Arcanums, uh, using the Ars Arcanums whenever uh, Dark Balls spawn back in from being invincible. And... Goofy going to town on that Let's one Dark Let's go, ball. dude. All right, so now that's Dark Ball core finished, and uh, there's another fight that we're going to be using damage storage on just a little bit. Or, or actually, no, that's not until later. Uh, for phase, we're actually going to be doing something a little bit riskier, which is uh, we're going to basically get onto the top of his head and launch a lot of Ars Arcanums. We're going to also throw Arrow out there because this is so risky that we usually take a few hits. Um, yeah, hopefully, be careful here. You want to make sure your Arrow is still up and also you haven't taken too much damage. Dying in this fight is very easy. And hopefully Goofy also throws us a fair amount of MP gifts so that we can just keep chucking out ours arcanums. Ah, oh, shoot. Sneaking in a couple of slap shots whenever possible. And yeah, you'll see that Mist has to like dodge back out and uh, throw another arrow whenever things get too spicy. It gets kind of awkward if you only have two MP because Goofy won't throw you the MP gift, so you kind of have to throw your magic somewhere to get him to give you that extra magic to use more R's. He's on oh his my goodness. <laughs> my cure got canceled. That was bad. It's all right. Just... He's on his final bar, though, so there this should go. be the end. Should be fine. There we go. Nice. All right. Okay. Uh... Now here comes a really dangerous part that uh, can just go south completely due to RNG. We have the invisible core. Uh, they're all going to charge at us at one end of the arena. Hopefully Goofy does not push them and we can stop two waves of invisibles that come in. Here's the first wave. They're stopped. Here comes the second wave. Excellent. Nice. All right, a couple of group gravities basically ensures that uh, we spread out as much damage as we can. Beautiful. And, yeah, they're all dead now. All right, we want to make sure that we have three MP going into this next fight at least uh, so that we can, you know, check a few gravities and uh, defeat the main core pretty quickly. We also want to have enough magic for uh, the last fight too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time will be coming up pretty soon. All right, gravities. there's the gravities. Some hits. All right, and Mist is going to keep attacking even though the main core is already defeated because he wants three MP. Oh, no, oh, dude. Man. Sorry, man. 
All right, so now uh, we're going to go for a relatively new strat, which is an Ansem 4 DM skip. So uh, Mist is going to corral Donald and Goofy to Ansem 4 by rallying them, and then he's going to do specific up and down bob and weaves. Now he's going to super glide over to Ansem 4, get a damage storage combo, land summon Musu. Excellent. All right, Alrighty, so time will be coming up very, very shortly. So we're going to summon Mushu, and uh, basically we save uh, about 15 seconds by uh, launching all the fireballs from Mushu's Spitfire as we can before a huge DM Dark Orb would suck us up. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. When that HP bar hits zero, it is time, so get ready. And that is time! Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, shout outs to uh, Dessa3579 and uh, Violin. Uh, basically, that DM skip was a three way project. Uh, and uh, yeah, now Proud and Level 1 both uh, reap the benefits from that. All right, and let's give Violin some cheers to finish up strong. He's almost yes. there, he's got it. Let's come up, let's go, dude. Almost done with face, we got this. All right, All right. good. Hopefully, you get the same kind of look on Invisible Core Vio. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> no, you will. It's peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that'd be the running gag for this run. <laughs> yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. <laughs> All right, here we go. Good. Solid. Second. And good. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. We cooking? That, that was a little bit too <laughs> scary because there was one. Oh, there's one of his. Oh, oh, oh. Is it okay? Oh, it's okay. That's fine. Yeah, yes. Who, wow. who needs it? We go. Easy. Easy every time. Come on now. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, the reason that that uh, fight can be very dangerous is, uh, you know, they deal a lot of damage. And uh, if we die to that fight in particular, the Invisibles spawn in way closer to Sora, and it's, like, even harder to stay alive if you end up having to retry that fight. Mm hmm And a uh, very cool thing, Violin is actually going to demonstrate a secondary way we can do the final boss uh, momentarily here right after this fight. Yeah, he actually, like, we were in a VC working out if we could make the DMs get better, and uh, he and I both came up with wildly different strats. <laughs> so, and his is actually faster by a little bit. It is. Let's watch the swag. All right. Let's see if we get it. All right, he's going to do the same thing where he corrals Donald the Goofy over. He's going to dodge these lasers, land on this platform, jump, get the damage towards combo, land, and Beautiful. Mushu. Beautiful. Not over yet. Yep. <laughs> he's got to dodge the remaining lasers, but uh, he's, he's pretty much got this. Yeah, he's got one round of lasers to dodge. He basically just has to jump over it, and then, uh, yeah, same idea. Once that HP gets to zero, that's time in the round. All right, and final time is coming up in just a moment. Oh. Hopefully. All right, yes, good. there we no, Okay, time is coming up in just a moment. Here we go. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes, he's got it. All right. Andrew Bar is ticking down. And, and that, that is time! time. <laughs> Proud of you. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> of course. All right, so yeah, that's Kingdom Hearts Final Mix on Proud. Fantastic. Cool. That was excellent. <laughs> Uh, how are we looking on the Sephiroth incentive? Uh, unfortunately, it does not look like it will be met. Oh. That's too bad, man. It's okay. Well, thanks to everyone who donated anyway. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you. A lot of homies come out in the donos and all that stuff. We love all you guys. Love all the peeps that are showing up for the yeah, run. Yeah, shout out to the audience. The couch back here and the audience back here. We love you all very much. Um, <laughs> anything you guys want to say? Uh, I just want to thank my personal community, the Shade Brigade, for getting me here. I want to thank uh, the entire Kingdom Hearts speedrunning community for, um, you know, being so awesome and, like, labbing out strats mm -hmm. up with different things. It's been really awesome to see all these categories uh, evolve over time. Um, and if you want to learn these games, you should join our Discord, which you can find on uh, speedrun.com slash khfm. Um, and if you want to watch more of me, I stream on twitch.tv slash violin. I do a lot of Kingdom Hearts stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to thank my personal stream community as well, the Mist Continent. Uh, Final Fantasy IX reference, you should play that. <laughs> um, uh, thank you all again very much for allowing me to be here, similar to Violin and his am amazing community. Very wonderful people just across the board. I stream uh, as well. You wouldn't believe that. Uh, <laughs> Twitch.tv slash MissMaster1. I'm also a fellow KH speedrunner. Maybe a few things here and there, uh, back and forth. And uh, thank you guys very much. Anything you guys want to say? Sure. I'd like to, similar to these guys, uh, I'd like to thank my <laughs> community as well. I would not be here without them at all. So thank you very much. And uh, to go off what they said, uh, thank you very much to the KH speedrunner community. I've only been a part of it for 
a year and a half, and I very much consider it a family and have met very good friends in my life. So mm -hmm. shout outs to all you guys and, and for letting me be here with you. And Mr. Game? Uh, just shout outs to uh, SGDQ in particular, allowing us to do a very fun thing for charity. And uh, yeah, if it weren't for SGDQ, I don't think I'd be here because uh, I started getting into Kingdom Hearts <laughs> Final Mix speed running from watching Mist's run of level one back at SGDQ. Uh, so yeah, I hope everybody has a you know rest of a good SGDQ. And uh, thank you to the organizers and staff for uh, helping make this possible. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. That was Violin and Miss Master One with a fantastic race. Kingdom Hearts final mix. There were a lot of donations that did come in through that run. Thank you for everybody that did donate, such as this. We had $5 from Clark Streams, who says, Let's go, Violin. Been watching since early COVID, and seeing the growth and things you've achieved in that time has been inspiring. Good luck, my guy, and make sure you get bonkless. Less than three. All right. That